This week, our dark, our leader screwed it up already. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not good at all, is it? I muffed it up as well. <laughs> I know you did. OK, well, just pretend that didn't happen. Uh, my mic's just broken. OK, well, shall I stop it again? All right, um, hang on. Three, two, one... Go ahead. Fire. <laughs> What a team, eh? <laughs> this week, our leader, the Dark Lord Vader, enjoyed another brown bounce in the polls after his commanding response to the foot and mouth outbreak. He cut short his holiday in Scotland and rushed to get in front of the camera to say, everything's fine, there's nothing to see here. David Cameron, on the other hand, languished further down the nation's pop parade by being in another country at the time. Quite right, too. After all, Gordon Brown is an expert in farming affairs and knows the workings of a cow intimately, having eaten large amounts of them. In fact, he could probably unhinge his bottom jaw and swallow one whole. Yes, it has really come to this. Whoever shows up on TV and says they're taking control gets our vote, and whoever goes abroad to highlight the plight of people who would crawl over their dead aunties to get their hands on a diseased cow gets a giant elbow from the lot of us. Politics is a beauty parade now, and it's the ugliest that looks like winning. The stock market, on the other hand, has made losers of us all. Anyone with a pension or stocks was tearing their hair out this week as the dealer's screens turned to a sea of red, which is a bad thing. £56 billion was wiped off the value of London's leading firms as worldwide panic set in caused by lending people in America money to buy their cheap houses without checking to see if they could afford to pay it back. It happened here too, driving lorry loads of cash up to people whose sole occupation is watching Trisha is now thought not to be a good idea. And the whole stack of cars that constitutes the world's economy comes tumbling down. But at least Gordon Brown's had to cancel his holiday, so that's some small comfort. If only it had been somewhere nice, we'd feel a lot better. So do it again. Yeah. <laughs> One more with feeling. <laughs> No, Carol, you're absolutely right. Yeah. You know what? <sighs> it seems like... Only yesterday that yeah. we were here or doing it. Uh, but also, it seems like to be Prime Minister, you have to be able to state, the, you know, the bleeding the obvious. The bleeding obvious, yes. You know, you know, there's foot and mouth, yeah, we're dealing with it, everything's going to be okay. Mm. Anyone can say that. Exactly. Yeah, but that's what whether, want to hear, though. Whether or not it will actually be okay. It's like you're you're cuddling up to your mother's bosom, uh, breast, not bosom, breast. Yeah. Breast is better, isn't it? Bosom Bus is... Bosoms are more... Sexual. Yeah. yeah. Breast. You're, you're um, putting your head on your mother's breast and she's stroking your hair softly and cooing to you. Everything's going to be all right, dear. That's, as a nation, what we want to hear at any uh, given moment. And anybody who can do that with conviction uh, will get our vote. It's ridiculous, really, isn't it? Yeah, what but, a silly people we are. Yeah, but the thing is, we don't want to, uh, you know, you know, nuclear, you know, what's, oh, um... What? I was going to say <laughs> nuclear, nuclear up. It's, I think your up. microphone still isn't working. It, it isn't, makes you is sound it? like a fool. I do, don't I? Oh, no, 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 no oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's better. Oh, you sound much better now. What were you saying? I don't know. Here's a mobile. Hello. Hi, Nick. Hello. Have you heard of uh, the Wall Street Journal? Yeah. I was watching the Daily Show this week, and apparently now it's owned by Rupert Murdoch. After a good long while of toing and froing and uh, ifing and butting, yeah, the, uh, the the family whose name I forget who own it have now said, "Oh, all right then." I think that's alarming. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised that more people aren't aren't disturbed by this. Well, I saw that um, that program as well, and he yeah. made the good point that the uh, the right wing Rupert Murdoch now owns the right-wing Wall Street Journal. So, no change there, then? I mean, for, for a long time, it's been regarded as a newspaper of, you know, high reputation, but... Yeah, well, so's uh, The Times. And he owns that, too. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Well, hmm. you want to th think through your argument next time you call. I do. But thanks for calling. Yeah, no problem. All right, cheers, mate. Uh, ta -ta. That, uh, by the way, is the best talk show on television, bar none, and I'll take no argument about it. And it's on every day. The Daily Show on More 4. Thank you, for. Oh, is that the one we've, uh, what's his John name? Stewart. John Stewart. Yeah, it's very, very, very good. It's all, it's very American-centric, of course, as you'd expect. Uh, but, um, if you ignore their politics and just get to the jokes, it's 
very sharp, very funny, and if only we had something like that here, something that was very uh, satirical and was ripping the out of the politicians on a daily basis, or even a weekly basis, you know, something that uh, would actually make fun of the people who are leading us, because there's nothing that we can do about any of it, really. We vote for one bunch, and they're going to be just as bad as the next bunch. They all say the same thing, don't they? It's education, and the NHS will be safe in our hands, and I'll protect you from... Um, that nutter who's running Russia, or the nutter who's running Iran, or the nutter who's running, insert, wobbly country here. I mean, there's so many of them. Can we have a few fewer insane people running countries? Yeah. I mean, if your name is actually Vlad the Insaner, that's an indication. Alarm bells should be going off. Warning! Warning! That you shouldn't be running a country. Vladimir Putin. Um, you know, if, there's, if he's got helter-skelter going on behind his eyes, then perhaps uh, there's, uh, that's a signal that he should be removed from power straight away. Like Robert Mugabe, for instance. What a nutter that bloke is. You know, Peter Tatchell is the only person that's actually had an honest and correct response to Robert Mugabe. We, as a country, just sit back and let him get on with it. It's an absolute natural, national disgrace. Peter Tatchell, on the other hand, tried to arrest him. He tried to um, put a citizen's arrest on his... Um, uh, lapsing into Americana. Yes. And his ears. Yeah. And he was beaten to the ground for his troubles. Um, and did we help him as a nation? No, no we did not. We heaped opprobrium upon him. Well, there's no there was... oil there, is there? Exactly. <laughs> is the right answer. <laughs> yes, there is no oil there. No. Yeah, there's nothing in it. Every us. now and again you read about what's uh, going on in that country, and, and I don't want to talk about, um... <laughs> that country or night, or indeed politics in general, at all, ever. But it just beggars the imagination. They have a, um, it's, it's like um, uh, wartime Germany after, after the war when they had hyperinflation. Mm. They, they raised their, pr raise their prices, or were doing, when they actually had uh, anything on the shelves, on uh, a daily basis. Like sometimes two, three times a day they'd, they'd rise their prices, and people were coming in with wheelbarrows full of cash, throwing their wages over the gates of the factories to uh, their uh, wives, who would then uh, rush to see if they could buy the last tin of anchovies. But now, of course, there's nothing on the shelves, because he said, Robert Mugabe, who is so, so totally off his rocker, it's not even, well, it's not funny at all, it's actually very serious, particularly if you live there, we, uh, you know, one removed, can uh, look at it askance and find humour in it. But he said, right, all of you shopkeepers and all of you uh, manufacturers, you must now reduce your prices. And so they would be selling at a loss. Now, anyone with half a brain, anyone with a, with a, a D pass in uh, O-level economics would figure out pretty quickly that if people are going to be selling at a loss, they'll just stop selling. Why would you go to work if you're actually going to be charged to go to work? So there's nothing on the shelves for anybody to buy now. And, um, well, <laughs> and now he's saying, right, well, if you don't uh, go to work at a loss... It's like a Monty Python sketch. Oh, I had to get up at four o'clock in the morning, <laughs> three hours before I went to bed, lick road clean, wick tongue, and work <laughs> in mine for 48 hours a day and pay mine owner for the privilege of working there. Well, that's, that's actually what he's asking people to do. And if they don't pay for the privilege of selling goods to the people or manufacturing goods, then he's going to take their business away and just give it to his cronies, as he's given most of everything else that he's nicked. It's just, uh... Insane. It's insane in the membrane. You're quite correct. Insane in the membrane. <laughs> hey, um, uh, Sky Watchers, it's going to be a pretty great couple of days. Oh, yeah? You might want to get in there now. Do you mean Sky TV or Sky... No. The Sky. Well, Sky TV is a pretty, it's a, going to be a pretty great couple of days, whatever day you happen to be watching TV, right? <laughs> well, and that, that also applies to all other cable and satellite providers. Of course. Yeah, or people who only get the, uh, the ordinary five channels. Well. It's where we get 90% of our entertainment and our information. I won't hear a word said against television. What, the first, oh, I thought you meant the first five channels. Oh, well, even them, even them. I, I spat my coffee out today because, oh, um... really? There was an advert on ITV1 for a new, um, weekday chat show with oh, a good. bloke... So, don't, don't, don't tell me, let me guess. A weekday chat show? Yeah. Uh, no, is this, is this in the afternoon opposite, uh, uh, what's his name? Judy and Richard. Judy and Richard and the bloke with the dog. What's yeah. his name? Oh. Lily Savage. Yeah. 
can't remember right. what his name is. Um, Paul O'Grady. Paul That's O'Grady. It. Correct, Amundo. Yeah, Paul O'Grady, who is a rubbish. very... No, he is not <laughs> rubbish. No, uh, this is not right. He is not rubbish. There's many and various people who are getting paid giant sums of money in television who are rubbish and have no discernible talent whatsoever, and Paul O'Grady is not one of them. I know. It, I know. It just wind you up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm happy to sing the praises of people that I think are, are really good, sure. you know, because there's precious few of them out there, really, let's be honest, because we, we tend to idolise and um, give uh, overdue merit to people who are bland, and I bet that the person that you're thinking of is bland. Yeah. Because it's all, that, it's all well, that, that, uh, that media in general in this country seems to um, appreciate. In America, on the other hand, like people like John Stewart and uh, you know even uh, mainstream people like David Letterman have a, a certain edge about them. Mm. In this country, it's all got to be a bowl of cornflakes. It's got to be as beige as you can possibly guess it. Anyway, you're never going to guess who it is. Well, <laughs> hang on a minute. Is he a uh, camp? Yes. See, I am going to guess who it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the fact is, I don't really know who he is. Oh, so. You, you, you're gonna have a tough time guessing. Well, he's camp. Yeah, and I, I, I know a name, and I saw him being interviewed um, earlier in the week as well on uh, one of the morning programmes. Yeah. Just plugging his new show. So but it's a show in the afternoon. This is uh, like a sofa chat show with an audience of probably 100 year old ladies. Yeah, because they're the only people around to watch it at the time. And they do like camp. They can't stand. Us. Yes, but they but, but they don't associate camp with being gay. No. They just think they've always oh, a funny man like Larry uh, Grayson. Oh, they, don't, they don't actually think through the the nuts and bolts, if you will, of uh, <laughs> what it is to be gay. They just think, oh, he's funny. <laughs> he's a bit of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that weird that uh, we're so uh, rapidly homophobic in this country, and yet all of the um, the we're pretending that we're not now. We are, but we're pretending that we're not. As time goes on, we pretend more and more that we're not, but we are. Because <laughs> the only people that are gay on television are outrageously over-the-top uh, comic, um, comic book character yeah. gay. Like, 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 like gay like, caricatures. Exactly yeah. the phrase I was going <laughs> for. Thank you, Alex. Yes, caricatures, like Graham Norton, who is uh, like the latest in a long line of caricatures. John Inman and, uh, I'm free. Was that John Inman? <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, and, uh, Larry Grayson, like I say, and, well, there's just no end of them. And Kenneth Williams I'm not going to include, because Kenneth Williams was an actual proper comic genius. I mean, he was scarily talented. Yeah. And yeah. he could throw, he could throw camp in there. But he doesn't count, because he's, like, off on a pedestal on his own, along with, very, you know, precious few others, like Tommy Cooper and people like that. But do you think it's because, like, like you say, like old ladies in there if it's obvious that they're gay it's kind of all right it's better than if they're ambiguously well gay. i think the key is that they're asexual that there's nothing sexual about them they're just funny but men they're, yeah they're just lots of innuendo funny. anyway yeah in handsome. your endo exactly <laughs> 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 but yeah, yeah there's innuendo but the, but you could never actually imagine them having sex mm. right and I think that's the key, is that if they're de-sexed, like yeah. smooth down there, like an action man, yep. <laughs> then old ladies will like them and find them amusing, because it's unthreatening, in much the same way that young girls like sort of fey uh, boys in boy bands, because they're sexually unthreatening. Yeah. They're not going to, um, you know, have their wicked way with them uh, late night in a party. They're just going to sort of wistfully look in their eyes and then melt into the distance yes. and never la lay a hand upon them. And leave them yearning for more. <laughs> <laughs> How on earth did we get onto this, by the way? I don't know. Oh, we... it was you saying that the, this uh, chat show. Okay, well, I'm halfway there. He's camp. Is he? Uh, this is not a guess. Mm. This is a no. I'll keep asking questions until I get a no, okay. and then you must give me a clue, okay? Right. He's not a uh, reality show. Um, He's not uh, just a member of the public who happened to become famous by being on a reality TV show. No. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> at, le at least we got that, <laughs> hey. Is he, um, uh, some sort of stand-up comedian? No. Right. Is that a no or a yes? No. It's a no, isn't it's it? It's a definite no. All right, you're gonna have to give me a clue. Okay, um, he... Well, it's quite of a big clue. You just have to guess where he's from. He's an actor. An actor? Yeah. 
Now, is he an actor or an actor? No, just, just an actor. An actor, right. Uh, is he a soap actor? Yes. Oh, now I'm in lost territory because yeah. I don't know soaps. Well, neither do I. That's, he's that's, a soap actor. And he's been given a, you know, a prime time chat show. A camp actor on a soap. Now, is it the... Well, that would lead me to believe, not that I really know anything about them, but Coronation Street is historically camper than EastEnders, <laughs> right? Coronation Street, because Coronation Street is full of, um, or it used to be, anyway, full of uh, uh, women in uh, leopard, s leopard print boob tubes and three-foot-high hair yeah. with uh, earrings the size of car tyres, right? Right. So that is... that constitutes camp. So I would expect it to be Coronation Street, is that right? Correct. I've got no idea. Bet Lynch is the only person I... <laughs> or, or, um... Who's the old dear who used to have curlers in her hair? Oh. She died a long time ago. Well, I hope she did. <laughs> uh, if, if not, then I've offended her and all of her I, family. I don't, I don't even watch I didn't even know she was Street. ill. No, but this is a long time ago. This oh, is, right. um... Come on, Alex, you must know. I don't watch soaps. What, what you only watch the History Channel? Pretty much, <laughs> and the music channel. I, I like documentaries in the music channels. The music it. channels. Yeah, I uh, flipped around the music channels the other day. I can't believe that there's so many of them because I haven't had the music channels for a good long while, and then I rearranged my package. But that... let me rephrase that. Yes, I changed the uh, channels that I received, and uh, and music just came along with them. It's like an extra fifty p a month or something. That oh, all right. I never watched them, but just for amusement's sake, I was flipping up the dial. You know, going through Al Jazeera TV, which is actually quite good. And it, do it doesn't make you, um, unpatriotic to watch it, by the way. Have you got to be on Sky to watch that? Um, I don't know. I like Euro News as well. Yeah, Euro, no Euro News is quite normally. good. I like- huh? There's no <laughs> presenters normally, they just- oh, it's just they just, they just show you the news. Yeah. yeah. Um... No, the music channels, though- you... Fox is quite funny, if you take it with a pinch of, like, a mm. large bucket of salt. Yeah. You flick for the music channels and, Fair and you, you can lose three hours of your life. Well, I lost about uh, 15 seconds because they were all the same. And here's what they were all doing. It was black guys who were dressed as gangsters, not oh. gangsters, but gangsters, yes. who were gesticulating to a camera which was, uh, for some strange reason, on the floor. All the cameras are on the floor and they're looking up at them as they point and do the hand things as though they were shooting you while they're singing. And then there'd be a cut to some, uh, like, various assorted, and I'm sorry if this is offensive, but this is exactly what they were showing, hoes. <laughs> <laughs> the B word, which uh, New York apparently is trying to eradicate, can I say it? You know, uh, like the female dog. Yes. Bitch, bitches and hoes, that's what are uh, appearing in uh, rap videos. All men are gangsters who are going to kill you, or sell you drugs, yes. or both. And all women, regardless of who they are, even if the the star act, even if it's a woman's song, she's dressed up like uh, a cheap street hooker. And I can bet that she's on the bonnet of a car, a Which big is, Cadillac. Yeah, or well, like. no, more than a Cadillac, <laughs> because if it, if it's a, a rap video, then it's uh, not not even gold plated. It'll be solid, a solid gold Rolls Royce, <laughs> <laughs> dragging you along the ground. <laughs> yes. That's right, with his bonnet <laughs> bouncing up and down. <laughs> How silly. And they're uh, going on in the papers this week about uh, they need more uh, positive role models. Well, it would be a start, I suppose, yes. Yeah, shut down the music channels. Shut down the music channels, yeah. Apart from, um... Classic has got a music channel, haven't they? There's no bitches and hoes on Classic. But that <laughs> one's funny, because <laughs> it's always some real dolled-up woman going, <laughs> That was that was scary. It was, it was almost as though Kiri Tikanawanawa was in the studio with us there for a moment. No, hidden talent. Hmm. And you thought Lucy could sing? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, I didn't. Sunday night from ten. Abbott. Welcome and bienvenue. Welcome. Come on in. So it's in Coronation Street. You know that to be a fact, right? You're not making that up. You're not um, throwing me a curveball like they say in the States. Well, actually, I'm now... Uh, yes, yes, he is. Because the advert was him running or jumping around the actual Coronation Street itself. Running and jumping? Yeah, with an umbrella. Right, so he's not just camp, he's loud. Is he uh, like a Graham Norton type? Yeah, I'd oh. say so. God, like we need another one of those. Isn't that painful? Don't you find that like, oh no. Didn't they? Not another one. They spent like a zillion pounds to get him on the beep and then realised they had nothing to do with yeah, it. Yeah, that's happened several times, hasn't it? <laughs> 
<laughs> but then you just find they're on every program. Yeah. But well, it's it's funny because TV companies do that. They'll see somebody successful on one channel mm. and they think, oh, we must not get him, but get that success. Yes. And so they take him and then they say, great, now, can you be somebody else? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because he was he was more outrageous on Channel Four than he he was on the BBC. Yeah, I wonder if he's actually happy with his life, with the way it's gone. I mean, happy with the money, all right, but you but no matter how much money you're earning, you get used to it pretty quickly. Uh, in my well, un unless well, you get used to earning a lot quickly. Yeah, the, the lower down it goes, you you never get used to earning a, l a little <laughs> quickly. That that never gets um, tiring. Well, it gets tiring really quickly, but it never <laughs> you, it, you never can get, take that out of your mind. But yeah. If, if uh, great lorries of money are being driven up to your house, then suddenly it doesn't mean anything anymore and you look for something else to moan about. Because mm. that's the human condition, isn't it? No matter how well things are going, you'll always want to moan about something. I think that's just the way uh, people are. Sure. I mean, some people are happy and... That's the British condition, anyway. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's got a lot to do with our weather. I mean, it really does. But if it's a slate grey sky all the time, if it looks depressing outside, it has a depressing effect on you inside, in much the same way that Swedish uh, people are c commit suicide. Uh, I think uh, they have the highest suicide rate in the Western world. Now, you'd think, if you were, s if you were Swedish and you were hot and blonde and six foot... <laughs> What have you got to be depressed about, right? Because you're surrounded by other hot, blonde Swedish six-footers who are uh, just willing to oil themselves up and leap into a giant pile in a sauna. That's exactly what they do. But because it's dark all the time up there and the weather is dreadful, because apparently Sweden, we've got Sweden's summer. What, right now? Yeah, this jet stream. Not the last couple of days, but the rubbish that we had over the past couple of months. The jet stream has pushed the weather down. So this is what Sweden ordinarily gets. Can you imagine if we, if this was our summer every year? I mean, no wonder they're throwing themselves out of their... the top floor of their ig igloos or whatever it is that they so, live in. So they get that amount of rain every year? Apparently, that's what uh, we've got this year, is Sweden's weather, yeah. Oh, God. Awful. Um, so yes, it's, uh, if you are monetarily, um, sorted, then you just think about something else to moan about, and I would think, if I was Graham Norton, I'd be a bit, I'd be a bit depressed, really, because the, of the rubbish that I'm doing for a job. I mean, everything that he's on is embarrassing, isn't it? Well, I'd be, I'd be ashamed to go out. Well, that's the thing, because people will just remember him now for the last thing for, that he did. Yeah, the rubbish. In much the same way that people rem remember, um, Alec Guinness, yeah. For, uh, uh, El Pinocchio, or whatever he was in that Star Wars film. <laughs> Obi-Wan Kenobi. Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> if you'll strike me down, I will come back stronger than you could ever imagine. And everybody forgets that he was, uh, you know, friends with Larry. And, uh, you know, a great board treader. But I can't remember him anything else. Oh, yeah, of course you did the, uh, the thing where he was seven people. That was excellent. Yeah. No idea what that was called right now, but it will show up eventually on TCM. What's that? TCM. I don't know that. Turner Classic Movies. Really? Yeah. So we still haven't got to the bottom of uh, who it is that, uh, and, and we won't now until after the news. We can't make cuts. Are you trying to tell me that this is your act? So what have we got so far? So far, I've um, noted down. Here's the th topics that we've talked about so far. Yeah. Graham Norton, Coronation Street, Robert Mugabe, hyperinflation, campery. What have you got? Uh, make a big list. I've got Gordon Brown in Dorset. Uh, the yeah, Robert Mugabe, uh, the Sad Swedes, uh, <laughs> Gangster and Ho videos, and uh, yeah, TV. Uh, gang star videos. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a, a minimum of eight topics we've discussed so far, and it's not even, um, <laughs> whatever portion of the show we've already had. Wow. That's, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Not even, um, just over a, th a sixth of the show gone. It's a record. Oh, blimey, only a sixth. <laughs> Doesn't it drag when you're out of your mind? So, I still haven't got who it is. Is he, um... It's not the guy who says, chase me, chase me, is he? <laughs> I don't know. Please let it not be him. Burton on Trent. Hello, Aid. Hello, Nick. Aid. How are you doing? All right. Yeah, I've got another one to tack your brain with a fair a kick off, if you don't know about this. Um, today we was going to appear on a celebrity edition of Everyone's Been Millionaire. 
A celebrity edition of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Um, is that still going? Yeah, barely. I mean, they've got it down to about once a week now, and loads of repeats in the middle, but... Yeah, um, Chris Tarrant's had a, uh, a pretty rough time of it lately. <laughs> 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 to no amusement all round, of course. Yeah, yes, we're all very upset. They can control his stuff with his millions. <laughs> with, his, with all of his money, yeah. <laughs> Uh, who's going to be on a celebrity version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I don't know, uh, a giant brain that you're about to say, who is it? Um, well, it's somebody you know. It's, fe it's female. It's not Carol. Apparently so, yeah. What? <laughs> Carol? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just here to say, it's just sketchy what I know about it. I mean, I've heard on the, you know, the forums that somebody set up on your, in your name that Paul Ross mentioned that she's going to be on. Well, I was talking her to I, I was talking uh, to her today. Oh right, yeah. And she didn't mention uh, anything about that. Oh right, yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, I don't know. I wouldn't say about what happened differently, but I mean, uh, apparently it has already been filmed. So, well, I, I'm sure that she would have told me. I, thought I think that she she wouldn't have been able to fit the filming in around her important schedule of taking booze. She could have. Um, yeah, I thought you know you being um, well known with Carol, I thought you'd have been there phoning a friend or. <laughs> it's a court really handy when they uh, question what terms, uh, what does carbon dioxide do to lime water? Yeah, what does the carbon dioxide do to uh, lime water? Yeah, I would have known that straight away. Yeah, that well, would have I mean, been a million um, pound question. I'd have split it between her and whatever charity uh, she was. She said that she was going to give the money to. I, mean, like I, said, I don't know what happens apart from um, apparently she has to ask the audience on a question about travel. No, <laughs> Carol does nothing but travel. Oh, no, that's, that's the thing. I mean, I'm wondering what... I mean, we'll see whenever it gets on air, but, um... But Not even Judith Chalmers has got as many stamps in her passport as Carol. She's hardly ever here. <laughs> she's, she's got... I mean, she's got the best job. I mean, Judith Chalmers doesn't do anything anymore. Well, she sits, uh, Carol, she, uh, sits with the, um, the... What's that show called? Flooses? Loose Flooses. Loose yeah. women, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she just gabs away. Oh, yeah, she goes, Oi! Like that, and they pay a million pounds. That's telly money, though. I only, I mean, I do. I don't mind watching watching when she's on because it's you know it's just worth watching. Yeah, she's Carol's on. funny. Well, you know when she's yeah, it's very rarely that she's on. But I mean, when you have a new dinner and Carol's on, you just got to stop and well, stop eating straight time. away. Yeah, I would think so. That was unnecessarily <laughs> nasty. <laughs> Well, um, well, thanks for the uh, the shocking news, Adrian. I'll uh, I'll definitely oh, yeah, and, um, set my machine. Yeah. <laughs> um, did you to record what's on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we'll watch out for that. But um, did you know that you're talking about TV channels and that? Did you know that one the TMF or should be with some butter again? TMF. Yeah. What's that? Uh, is it music factory. The Music Factory, TMF. It sounds like it would be really, really rude. The Music Factory. Oh, well, that's a relief. Yeah, it's one of these <laughs> things you can get free on, um, you know, on the... the yeah. Oh, well, that's great. When does it start? Well, it's been on for a while. What? I know, I keep meaning to tell you, but I always... It's always goes out of my mind. <laughs> TMF. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. And um, put it in my pocket, and when I, when I, tomorrow, when I wake up in a blur and see that I've written TMF in my pocket, I think that somebody's, uh, has been offending yeah, me. But, I mean, I will warn you about what, it, it's outrageous what they do, really. It's on the show with like an hour's worth of it, but most weeks, you'll like, see an episode, and then, um, straight after, it'll be the same episode again. Right. <laughs> so, you know, it's... Don't watch it live, record. Oh, I never watch anything live, unless it's the news. <laughs> so, um, how's your car, in a way? Have you sorted that out? Oh. I'm waiting for you to... Well, a man that. came round, of course. You always need a man, don't you? And, yeah. um, I wasn't there at the time, but apparently he looked at it, and uh, I don't think he did anything at all. And he just went away, and I think he just fixed itself. <laughs> it seemed to be shaking violently on the way here, you know, every time I... S like, when I started it up, it seemed to be shaking. But that wouldn't have anything to do with the alarm, would it? No, it seemed no. to uh, like iron itself out. Perhaps a disgruntled neighbour had put a banana up my hose pipe. <laughs> that sounds very painful. <laughs> yeah, but those key fobs, um, I just think, I don't think I've told you this before. When I had mine, uh, I wanted a spare one. And uh, I had to go to the main dealer to get a spare one because I wanted it repro you've got to reprogram all this malarkey. I mean, it's all out of rubbish, really. It should take them two minutes. But you had to 
awarded a case that was going to charge hundred and forty pounds for it. A hundred and forty. Yeah. Just, just, Isn't that incredible? Yeah. And the reason that they can do that is because they have a monopoly. You can't go anywhere else. And nobody else can do it. Yeah. Plus, it took two attempts to do it. I sat there one day, two hours, and it says, "Oh, sorry, sir, the system's down. I've come back another time." Well, that uh, serves you right for owning an, ex an exotic supercar. Uh, I did have to that last laugh, because the next time I went, it took them all day again, admittedly, to do it. Yeah, which, which is annoying, because it's, all you do is, it just programs the key for a computer, for, like a lead or Bluetooth or whatever. And uh, when I come pick it up, it says, well, um, send it a bill in the post, and I never got it. <laughs> oh, well... <laughs> So Great. I'm, I'm, Another I'm, satisfied customer. I've never been back there since. No, quite. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot, Aid. Snap on those rubber gloves. <laughs> I want that bowl sparkling. All right. So, uh, we're still back at this, um... Who is it? Who is it? Who is it? Is it, an, uh, is it anyone that I'm actually going to know? I mean, is it one of the famous ones? Well... I mean, it can't be, because if he's got a chat show coming up, he's going to be... He'll have been fired, right? Um, well, no, I think he, I think he's still in the soap as well. Wow, that's a, that's a heavy-duty workload. Not even Eamon Holmes works that much. Because <laughs> I think that it's being filmed in Manchester, and I think that's where they film the Coronation Street. Right, well, you know what? It's going to crash and burn. I don't care who it is. Who is it? Well, I, I didn't know who it was. It's this bloke who's called Anthony Cotton. A Anthony Cotton? Ever heard of him? No. Well, this is this is what I thought was weird that this is you know the prime time chat show is going to be on five days a week, and it's someone you know probably most people in this country have never heard of. Right, it's, it's a weird thing to do, isn't it? Well, g dial up a picture of him. Let me see uh, what he looks like. Perhaps he's a an hilarious stand up comedian from another life. Uh, well, I don't think so. I think he, I'm sure he's just an actor. Anthony Cotton. Um. But it doesn't really matter who it is, because if you go up against, um, the, the nation's favourite now, Richard and Judy... Oh. Blimey. Oh. They always kind of look like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Go back. Back again. Stop. Okay. Just stop. I stop I've there. Stopped. All right. Right. Yeah, I get the picture. He's, um, he's, he's the same shade as luggage. <laughs> <laughs> and he's got teeth. And lo uh, yeah, and lots of them. Luminous white teeth mm. and, uh, and, and face, uh, uh, well, he's, he's virtually glowing, isn't he? Oh, look, he's got an acting trophy there. I doubt it. Oh. It looks like an action man. Right. Or something like that. But it's just a weird thing to do because he's, um, uh, you know, they've got this person, but then again, ITV know that he's probably really popular among the Coronation Street audience. Right. Which is what? I don't know, three or four million, do you reckon? Oh, no, it's much more than that. And so maybe they're counting on... I think it's up to... Th isn't it something like 13 million or something like that? Watch, uh... Really? Yeah. But even if, like, say, half the Coronation Street audience tune into his new show, that's a guaranteed, mm. si like, six million. Oh, absolutely. That's that's the thinking, yeah, behind it, but, um... But for the rest of us who don't watch Coronation Street, we don't have a clue who he is. Well, I think that uh, there's a certain amount of desperation in TV land now, and uh, no one's got any ideas anymore, so they just... It's like a dog going around in circles trying to eat his own tail. They just come up with different versions of an idea that's on another channel at the same time, which is why you've got... On the Saturday nights, I think, you've got one, uh, uh, toddlers dancing, doing ballroom dancing on one channel. Yeah. Which, and I still cannot believe that that's on the air. That makes my skin crawl every time I even think about it. That is, it is creepy, you're right. It's like those, uh, toddler beauty parades that they have in America. What do they call them? Well, toddler beauty, beauty parades, that'll do, won't it? pageants. <laughs> yeah, pageants, that's right. Mm. I mean, that's just weird, isn't it? Why would you want to see a toddler ballroom dancing with the teeth and the grinning and the you know, the fixed rictus grin on their face? And well, that's just because people bizarre. think it's cute. It's not cute. Well, it's they do in America anyway. Anyway, you got that on one side, and you got Dance X or whatever it is on the other side. It's only called Dance X because of the X factor. You see, it's mm -hmm. it's not singing this time. It's dancing, which is the only other thing that they could think of that people would sit and watch for an hour. Yeah, we can't do another singing one because well, we've had Pop Idol, we've had. Uh, X Factor, and, and what else is there? How, how many other ways can you get a, a singing contest without it looking like 
Um, Simon Cowell is the only man with an idea left. Well, see, this is maybe the uh, thinking behind ITV, this chat show, because, you know, they, like, you know, each channel, you know, will have their own, like, kind of Graham Norton character. Maybe this is their... This is, right. Their very own Graham Norton character. There isn't anybody overtly camp on ITV, so we've got to get one. And, and the other thing is, there's a, 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 another new show on the GMTV in the morning, which is brand new. It's, uh... The oh, what was that one called? The Richard Arnold Show. Who's that? Exactly. <laughs> it's another bloke who we don't know. We don't know. They're anything just copying about those like American Blando talk shows, aren't they? No. Oh wait a minute, the Richard Arnold Show. Isn't that a guy who's? who's I flipped by something and I thought, what's going on here? It was a chap sitting behind a desk who would seem to be introducing clips of other things. Yeah, that's it. And that's the whole show. Yeah. Pretty well, much. I don't get it. Well, that's the thing. It, it, it's in this kind of the same studio. But he looks like uh, Richard Arnold. Looks like Anthony Cotton's brother. Yeah, hang on. Let me get a picture of Richard Anthony Arnold. Cotton's camper, plumper brother. <laughs> <laughs> what did they used to fill the uh, Saturday night with before all this guff came on? Oh, oh it was is. gun when I were a lad. Saturday night we had Morecambe and Wise and. Um, but you said not funny. Yeah. So you wouldn't be watching that now. No. And we had Sunday night at the London Palladium with Brucey, which was also rough, boring. And, and we had, uh... Um, Could you, uh, phone in and vote? No. Oh. Well, no one had a phone. In them days, you had to go into hall to make a phone call, and then in the hall... <laughs> yeah, in the hall, you couldn't see the TV. <laughs> Why people used to put the phone in the hall is just beyond me. That's that's really bizarre. That I think they hard. used to do it because it would be rude to be interrupted in the living room. <laughs> Whilst watching the TV. Yeah, in the front room. Yeah, you didn't want the telephone in the front room because it would be... It would interrupt you. Yeah, it was, it was always <laughs> like a, an uninvited guest. It was in your a big home. thing when we um, when we got, my mum got a, a phone uh, put by her bedside table. We thought that was such a novel yeah. idea. Mm. It was incredible. But in those days, of course, you could shut the phone up mm. by, and it took ages for me to figure this out. In fact, I only saw it. Uh, I had to do it on um, a TV program. Unplugging it in America? No, you dialed two. Yeah. Leaving one hot seat. Anybody under the age of 30 won't have any idea what we're talking about. Dial, f rotary dial phones. If yeah. you dial two, yes. then the one hole would be beyond the finger stop. And then you put a pencil in the one hole, which would stop the dial from going back. And that would render the phone dead. Would, not, would that not create that? <laughs> well, no, because the, your, the receiver would be on the hook. Genius. It is genius. It's the simple things that, uh, mean so much. Yeah, but, I mean, if you don't want to receive calls now, you just unplug it, don't you? Well, that's right, yeah. But I don't think that was an option in them days. It went, it disappeared into the wall, and I don't think not answering the phone was, uh, an option. Well, the thing is, all phones now come with, you know, y y your actual telephone wire, but also now a massive battery plug that you've got to plug in. Really? Yeah, most phones you've got to plug in nowadays into a, some sort of electricity point. Oh, if it's got a, a, a an answering machine service. Yeah. Off, yeah. Or cordless. Just, yeah, for, or a cordless one. Right. Well, you don't want to have a cordless phone because they'll fry your brain along with the Wi-Fi signal. Will they? Yeah, apparently so. There was this block of flats, um, it was in the news this week, uh, the people at the top floor are, uh, this is not a funny story at all, they're coming down with cancer at something like ten times the national rate because a mobile phone company, well, so they're saying, it's because a mobile phone mm -hmm. company has put their, uh, aerials on the top floor of the building. And it's got so bad, then people are saying they're passing out from headaches and they can't think straight and they're, you know, their entire life has gone fuzzy. And the, uh, the company's had to take them down now. And I think it's, they've, <laughs> they've relocated them I might be wrong, but I think school. I'm right. They relocated them to the top of a school. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. And Wi-Fi, that's another thing that we will, we'll come to find out. They'll say, in 20 years' time, when we're all dead, they'll say, oh, sorry, sorry about that. They'll say, sorry, um, <laughs> yeah, the Wi-Fi thing, yeah. I am very sorry that I screwed up. Totally screwed I mean, I am so sorry. You just don't know how sorry I am. I'm sorry. You're wondering what it's all about, and I can't tell you because I don't know myself. So, so far, I've got... I hope you were making notes. We, oh. need, an, uh, we need an extra person with a notepad in just the corner just to, like, write down every single topic that we talk about. I know, we're, we're understaffed here. <laughs> 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 Graham Norton, Coronation Street, Robert McGarvey, Hyperinflation, Campery, Gordon Brand, Sad Swedes, Gangster Videos, Wi-Fi, Car Alarms... Um... Yeah, that's pretty much what I've got. 
<laughs> you are <laughs> rubbish at this. All right, I'll be, make more detailed notes. Epsom. Hello, Susan. Oh, uh, hi there. Susan. Hello there. How are you? Uh, I'm fine, thank you. You? Yeah. OK. Well, we've had rather a strange experience tonight. Um, we, were heard, we heard that maybe there was going to be a comet shower or something tonight, maybe the early hours of the morning. Yeah. Um, it was actually in our garden around uh, half nine, quarter to ten, mm -hmm. and there was this bright orange ball that went across the sky. It hovered and then went over, then went over in the distance towards, I would say, London Way. And then half an hour later, we actually went out the front of the house and another white ball, but this one was white and not orange, actually came over and went over in exactly the same area. And we were wondering if anyone else had seen them because there were six of us here and we mm. certainly hadn't had a drink. <laughs> right. Hey, Susan. Yeah? Want to score some pot? <sighs> this reminds me of something that happened a couple of months ago. Yeah. And somebody called up and said almost the same thing, and it turned out to be Chinese lanterns. Really? Yeah, you know, they put a candle or something in, um, like a big ball of paper, and then they set it off, and they, the warm air uh, created by the candle just lets, makes it rise and rise and rise, and I think yeah. eventually it bursts into flames and, uh, and, and engulfs someone's house or something like that. Right. They also had an, a, an air, a, a hot air balloon rally. Yeah. In... But that was Bristol, so that wouldn't be uh, no. that wouldn't be an Epsom, would it? What? So what did it did it look like? They were they were. I know it's hard to get a sense of perspective in the dark, but did it look like they were big and near, or um, or I mean, big and far away, or small and near? I would say it was big and far away, but it was definitely not a Chinese balloon because uh, or anything. It was nothing like that because it had like. Um, as you would say, like a comic glow to it. But did it move as fast as a comic? Did it streak across the sky? No, no, it didn't actually. It 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 hovered and then it travelled at speed. Because you know that Mars is out now as well. It's yeah, that that's what we were wondering whether we we were actually seeing this or whether you know we'd actually seen something else. Right. Well, un unless something really significantly bad has happened in the cosmos, Mars should be fairly still in the sky. Right. So, I so don't know, this, Susan. How about this comet show that we're supposed to be having? Would you like me to tell you more? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you like to listen to it on the radio rather than talking to me? Well, yes, that's, no, that's fine, yeah. We can listen to it on the radio. All right. Thanks a lot, Susan. OK. We'll try and so. figure it out, all right. OK, thanks. Cheers, my dear. Ta-ta. What a nice lady. Yeah, more people like Susan, please. Um, shooting stars are set to grace the night sky with a spectacular light display this weekend. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. The annual Perseid, I think that's how you pronounce it, Perseid meteor shower will reach its peak during the early hours of Monday. That is Sunday night, Monday morning. Hmm. But it will be visible from Saturday night right now until Tuesday morning. The celestial show will be most apparent in the northeastern part of the sky near the Perseus constellation. What's that then? Um, Is Perse that the one that looks like a saucepan? Per or the one that looks like a belt? Perseus. Perseus. Yeah. Who is Hence that? Hence the Perseids. Mm. Perseus pig? No, I don't know. <laughs> don't be silly, Alex. You can't. You can never see anything in London anyway. You, you, <laughs> yeah, sure you, you can. You go it's, out it's and you go. Oh, all right. So there's loads of. You can barely see, see a star. Orange glow well, in Leicester Square, pollution. perhaps. No, you, honestly, even around here, you, you know, in West London, you can barely see a star. Well, you want to get yourself to a park or something. Really? What? Yeah. What? Well, there's too How much light help? pollution in London to see anything. No, really? above parks, you've got this funnel of dark. That doesn't happen. Of course does it does. Why? What do you mean, why? <laughs> Surely just, you know, any smog from the city just goes up and just spreads around in the sky anyway. It doesn't just concentrate. Yeah, but if it's, if it's a clear night, if, you, if you're uh, in or near a park, then the dark that surrounds a park will actually give you, like, a hole. A, ho a dark hole. <laughs> the black hole. In the sky, precisely, yeah. Whereas like, it will be surrounded by the sort of orangey, hideous glow that we all um, uh, insist upon, you know. But, uh, yeah, get yourself to a park and have a quick peek. All right. See you later. <laughs> if the skies remain clear, I think it's fairly clear tonight, right? 
yeah. It will offer stargazers the best opportunity for a few years to see the Perseids. So what is the Perseus constellation? I only know one, and it looks like a saucepan to me, but apparently it's called the Big Dipper, or the Small Dipper. What, you, you can actually see it? It's a saucepan, yeah. It's like the handle, and then the, and then the pan. See, I, I can't... But it's supposed to be the plow. I think it's the plow. Yeah. They call it the plow. Is that the It's the plow here, and I think the Big Dipper in America. Right. Can you actually make it out there in, in, if you see it in the sky? Yeah, it looks like a saucepan. I can't With do a that. curved handle. I can never, yeah, but I can never this see is, things like that. This really well on radio, but it looks like, kind of looks like that. Thanks, Alex. Yeah, I can, I can never work it out. It's like looking at a magic eye print or something like that. Oh, you can't work those out either? No. What, even if you just stare and stare and stare at them? Yeah, just and can't it, do them whatsoever. It's always a dolphin. It's like a conspiracy <laughs> against me. The shower this year coincides with a new moon, providing sky watchers with the dark skies necessary for excellent observing conditions. If we're lucky, on Sunday night and Monday morning, we might see as many as a hundred meteors an hour, Dr. Robert said. He's from the UK's Royal Astronomical Society. Are you still drawing diagrams? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit. You're showing me the uh, shape of a saucepan. He says, but the usual. Well, you know what a saucepan looks like. Yeah, it's, it's got an handle, isn't it? I told you, Alex. But the usual caveat applies, you still need good weather. I, I read uh, today in the five-day forecast that it's going to be raining tomorrow. Raining tomorrow? What? Oh, no. Oh, no. What? I thought they said, that, you know, the, the rain had passed now and the rest of the summer was going to be beautiful. Yeah, that's what we were hoping for, yeah. The best viewing conditions will be where the sky is clearest and darkest. However, the meteors should be visible to a lesser degree in cities, despite light pollution and smog. Hmm. You'll see them almost wherever you are, so it's worth a look, Dr. Rob says. Watchers will get the best display from around 10 o'clock on Sunday, so 10 p.m. tomorrow night, and will peak just before sunrise on Monday the 13th. The annual Perseid showers are caused by... are we interested? Mm -hmm. Small bits of debris, many no bigger than a grain of sand, that enter the Earth's atmosphere when our orbit passes through the tail of the Swift-Tuttle Comet. Now, don't you find that a little bit worrying? That if we're passing through the tail of it, then if we'd arrived a little bit earlier at this point, we'd actually be on a collision course. That must be one hell of a tail. These particles travel at very high speeds, reaching up to 50 kilometres per second. That's 32 miles a second. And they burn up in the atmosphere, you see. This causes the air around them to get extremely hot, which produces the streak of light that we see. It's a spectacular phenomenon that anyone can enjoy. The great thing is that you don't need any equipment apart from your eyeballs, the good doctor said. Oh. I've got two of those. Double the fun. It's a laid-back form of astronomy, he said. You can go outside, look up at the sky, and enjoy it. And that's what it's really all about. Groovy. And as an added bonus, watchers should be able to see Mars, which will be in view as a bright red dot in the eastern sky after midnight. Yowza. So that's, uh, that's fairly groovy and yowza all round. Oh, I'm way past a break. Are you sitting comfortably? <laughs> Oh, well, you've left me high and dry now. <laughs> I, haven't got, I haven't got enough time to take a call. I haven't got enough time to um, start another story. So I'll just whistle. You know how to whistle, don't you? You no. just put your lips together and blow. <laughs> can't even do that either. Can't do magic that eyes, been, can't even whistle. That would have been great if she had done that in the film. <laughs> <laughs> just gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's whistling with your fingers that I can't do. Of course, uh, you know what Freud said about whistling? What's that? Well, you know what Freud, what we used to say in the playground about what Freud said about whistling? I don't believe that Freud actually said this at all. He was too busy thinking about his mother. Rude things, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, he was a rebel and he'll never, never be any good. So this has been the first hour and so far we've talked about, oh, no end of things. We'll be compiling a list and coming back with it, won't we, Chris? Uh-oh. That's a no. Right, so what we do? So I think the nice lady said there was uh, something about uh, showers in there tomorrow, right? Yeah. I don't know about you, but I find it m most depressing that Match of the Day has started again. Because that speaks of winter to me. I'm not ready to give up on summer yet. I haven't had enough yet. I don't think any of us had. Well, it, it is nearly the middle of August. Well, it should be... 
I, yeah, I guess it is near the middle of August, so there is some comfort to be had there because August can be nice, can't yeah. it? Um, well, yeah. So I'll please say that it can, and then September can be quite nice too. October can be pleasant. I've had a picnic in November. Hey! What? What yeah. in this country? Absolutely, I had a picnic um, a couple of years ago on November the fifth. Wow. And on November the sixth was actually a nicer day. Normally it's freezing then. Surely. Don't call me Shirley, and normally it's, uh, it can be quite nice. Oh. Pleasant, I'd say. Hey! I mean, you wouldn't want to sleep out overnight, but, uh, yeah, I can remember it quite distinctly. I want to go and have a picnic next week. As soon as the sun shines and you're not working, do yourself a favour, throw your hands in the air and run, screaming outside. They'll give you your own show on, uh, ITV. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell you what, you see, I don't understand, you, you, do, you like picnics, but you can't stand going to sit on the beach for... You know, hours and hours. Completely different. Well, you see, with a, with a picnic, um... You know, you spend the same amount of time having a picnic as you would... Yeah, you but know, there's no... Sh there's, on the beach. Yeah, but there's no shade on the beach. Get, you can take... You can hire umbrellas and oh, stuff. Oh, right. It's lovely, honestly. You get, you know, you get a nice, um, beach deck chair or whatever and... Yeah, but what about the people? All the people, there's people... Well, you do what everyone else does and you, you walk down the beach until you find your, a very, your spot of your very own, you know. In Italy they started to fine people, I think something like 700 pounds, for putting their towels down to reserve their spot. Really? And that's, a, uh, directed to you know who. Uh oh. What an excellent idea, because uh, the beaches in Italy are apparently absolutely jam-packed and there is uh, barely a, a pinch of sand that is not occupied at all times. And people are going out, <laughs> they find this, this guy, well, oh, untold thousands, because he was getting up at six o'clock in the morning and laying out twelve towels. <laughs> and he says, well, it's my right. This, this is not the accent that he was using, but I shan't do it because I'll sound like um, I'm about to uh, annex the <laughs> Sudetenland. He said, it's my right to put out my towels for uh, my extended family, which included him, his wife, his, um, his, uh, son, yeah. and his wife, and their children, and their grandchildren. So basically he was, he was annexing the entire beach. But yeah, but he, surely there's enough space for out other people. And they've given it to, they've given this job to him because he's a pensioner, and as you know, when, the older you get, the earlier you wake up. Yeah. Isn't that weird? <laughs> 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 and no one's gonna f argue with him, really, aren't they? Oh, cute old man. No, you exactly. Really yeah. Tell him off for putting up. But, uh, fortunately, the Italian authorities have stepped up and are, um, are clamping down on that. I mm. find it deeply, deeply annoying. I've only ever uh, come across it once, because I don't really sit on loungers, I just don't do that. Mm. Um, I just, th I find that to be the most boring thing that you could ever do. Fifteen minutes, tops, well, and then I'm done. It's just like lying on a sofa. How, how could you not <laughs> enjoy that? <laughs> Yeah, but I can lie on a sofa in the squalor of my own lounge. Yeah. I don't need to go abroad to do that. When I'm abroad, I like to go and see things, do things, you know, get out a bit. Not just lie with my eyes closed or, or read some book that I picked up at the airport. Yeah, but you can do just... Do that at home. You can, like, watch everyone else. Look at the sea and look at everyone, you know. See, when I go to the beach, I, I get there, I change into my... Bathing a suit. Oh, oh no! Oh, and no. then I, oh, I get straight in the God, water. No. What a repellent sure, thought! Sure. Well, I, I get straight. In, I go straight into the water. You've got to change. Then, don't don't change what? on the beach. Change bef when no, you bathe I mean, suit I mean, to the beach. Yeah, it's a lot know, easier. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a lot easier. I get my bathing. I hope they're. Uh, that it's like um, a Victorian one piece. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a bathing machine that they tow out into the sea, <laughs> and I emerge from it. What, you just stay and in the I dip, sea? I dip myself ankle height in the water yeah. and then I go, done, and then... do you go for actual swim around? bring me towels and I'll I don't want to in. get into any body of water that's not surrounded by tiles. There's things in the <laughs> sea. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, but way out, way out of there, you know. There's nothing around the, um, the shallow bits. Dun -dun. Have you not been reading The Sun? The Sun have, uh, have, um, become very defensive recently because, of course, their uh, tale about uh, great whites being seen off the coast of Cornwall mm. has been poo-pooed by other newspapers who said, oh, no, it's not. And they, they actually had a leader um, that said, basically, stop picking on us. <laughs> 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 We're right. Yeah. Uh, but no, nobody really believes them. But, yeah, there's all sorts of things out there that are icky and slimy. I don't know how you can do it. I think Billy Connolly said just don't go in the water. 
because there's things that want to eat us. Yeah. In there. That's right. We yeah. had a point. It wasn't funny, but he had a point. Yeah. There, well, he, he said it funnier than I did. Right, it was the way he tells it. Yeah. yeah. There's things that want to eat us on land, though, as well, you know. You got Mosquitoes. A... Mozzies. Yeah, they're draining you as you speak. <laughs> I haven't been bitten once so far this year. We're supposed to have a a, a pestilent plague of mosquitoes this year. It's supposed and, to and be horse flies. just the weather for them. Horse flies, what are they? Are they the ones that are like biplanes? Yeah, they're got massive. The huge things. Yeah, I saw one of those. Yeah, they, they're, they're sort of iridescent and they glow purple. I got bitten twice today. Not by a horse fly. I don't know what it was. I got two, one bite on one arm and one on the other. Oh, was it a horse? No. Here is uh, St Albans. Oh, Ricky! <laughs> hey, Mickey, Ricky. Hi, how you doing? I'm all right. Uh, I was just talking about cordless phones. Oh yeah. And we've got another little problem with them. They're what? still interceptable. How do you mean? You can hear them. You've got a radio of the right sort. What? What sort? But they're calls. What kind of a radio would you need? Um, a good scanner. A scanner? Yep. Uh, what's that then? Well, it, uh, covers a very wide range of frequency, very quickly, picking out the signals that you've, uh, pre-programmed into it that you want to listen to, and, uh, when it finds one, it stops on it. Have you got one of these? Uh, yes, I have. Why did you, why did you get one of those? Oh, it, it's not for that. Only that, it does other things as well. What, well, what, well, like listening to the police and the ambulance? Uh, police are gone, they're all digital now. All oh, right. Except for Met Pole, they've still got one or two, uh... Met Pole? Is that what they call themselves? <laughs> Met <Right>. Pole. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you get the scanner then, Rick I? Oh, I've had it for years, mate. I use it mainly for shortwave. Right. But are there any, uh, radio stations with DJs on there? Hey! No? No. <laughs> right. So it's only listening into other people's conversations. Well, that must be so boring. And then she said, and I said, and she said, and I said, oh! How dull is that? No, but, uh, you could give your bank details away, couldn't you? Unknowingly. Your bank details? Yeah, yes, yeah. you could, yeah, you're, you're right yeah. there. I mean, how many times do they ask you, um, pertinent questions towards your, uh, bank account? Yeah, pertinent and impertinent, yeah. You're right. They do. And what's your mother's maiden name, and what's your date yeah. of birth, and what's the third letter from your, uh, password, and this, that, and the other. Is. Yeah, you could be, uh, you could be the head of an, uh, of, uh, an, an eagle, e evil, thieving organisation, Rikai. You could. Yeah. Okay, well, well pointed out. Thanks a lot, mate. That's another yeah. good reason not to have one. Cheers. Cheers, then. Thanks, Ricky. Uh, yeah, they are, um, unsafe. Insecure. Hmm. Unsecure. You know, unsecure? Insecure. In I'm insecure, they're unsecure. They're unsecure, yeah. yeah. You know there's bright lights in the sky? Yeah. Do you think they're anything to do with the space shuttle that's up there at the moment? Huh. Because that's f flying around, isn't it? It's not flying around at 32,000 miles a second or whatever it was. How fast are those things going? I don't know, it's pretty far. The orbit's pretty far. Yeah, not 32 it, miles a second, you, surely. Yeah, have you yeah, ever seen can. pictures of it when it's like, you know, when you've got the, the, um, the Earth in the background and it's just flying by? Yeah. The speed of it, which is passing the or Earth. Or is it stationary and the Earth is spinning? Not, the Earth isn't spinning that fast. The Earth is spinning... I think they're both 86,000 miles an hour, something like that. Is that right? No. It's a give complete or, give guess. Or take a no, few no, no, of course it can't, because otherwise we'd have, like, you know... It would be, be clinging on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We'd have to have handles everywhere in exactly. case we spun off into space. Yeah. Where no one can hear you scream. But, you know, but surely the space shuttle, if it's up there, at some point it's gonna pass... Well, you might have the something there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it would reflect the sun. If yeah. the sun's on the other side of us, it might pick up the sun's reflection and glow orange. Yes and not move quite as fast as, um, a meteor sh shower. Yeah. Because it's docked with the space station at the moment, I Yeah. Think. So that would be an even bigger... Yeah, people can see the space station right. from Earth, can't they? Huh. Well, we might have solved that. There you go. That nice lady that called earlier on. Susan? 
Susan. Susan. Yeah. Susan. Can't believe I actually remembered something that happened on this show. Uh, let's have, um, Stansted. Hi, Pat. Oh, hello there. Pat. Um, I was listening, the, the bright lights in the sky. Yeah. I was listening to Clive Ball's programme the other evening, and a, a, a somebody who knows all about astronomy actually rang in and said for everybody to go out into their guard, look up into the sky. It was around about half past ten at night up until 22, where you'd see the shuttle going over, and a few seconds later, the other, uh, I can't think what you call it, scientific name for it, the one that goes refuels, would, would be following. Huh. I can't, I'm sorry, I can't remember the, 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 the correct name. Well, not the space station. The space station. Yes, that's it. Right. Yes, that's it. And, um, but you had to watch it between ten minutes, and unfortunately Clive forgot to remind people. And so, right, so it shoots across the sky in, in a period of about ten minutes, is that what you're saying? Yes, that's it, yes. Right, and then disappears. And one, one followed the other, and the second one would have had an orange glow to it. Because of it reflecting uh, on I'm not sure, I can't tell you, right. I can't tell you. Well, um, it so sounds that may like have been again tonight. You see, but I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, there's, there's another good reason to listen to Clive's show. Oh, mm, quite. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Pat. Okay then. It looks like we actually got something right there. People can actually learn something from the show. <laughs> yeah, as hard as that might be to believe. I'm listening, dear. You can talk to me. It's Mister Lester. Oh, good evening, Nick. Philip. Uh, a couple of things. Actually, I'm. Bought myself a pair of binoculars for 99p. <laughs> really? Yeah. And when I, I heard that it was, it was all going to happen in the sky. So earlier this week, I went into one of them shops, and I found, it's really good. I tried it. I went out and looked at the moon the other night. Clear as anything. In what shop can you get a pair of binoculars? Oh, it's one of these shops, you know, they, they sell everything for one price. Some, some are a pound, and some are 99p. Is it Poundland? Uh, I think it is Poundland, yes. Yes. So there's another one, 99p. I buy all of my groceries in, pa in Poundland, yeah. Mm. Oh, what do you buy, Nick? Oh, uh, you know, crisps. Yeah, yeah. Uh, biscuits. Yeah. That's it's, it. It's interesting, you know, where the stuff comes from, you know, places I've never heard of. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine, yeah. Your biscuits and that, you know. Mm. But it's interesting, the, I, I haven't let, had a look out tonight out the window and it's the stars are all out there. Are uh, the stars out tonight? Right, yes. You know, it's really, really interesting, you know, when you... I'm fortunate that where I am, that it's, it is dark out in the garden, so you haven't got all the lights from the streets blocking up, you know, seeing the stars. Oh, so there's not much light pollution in South Norwood? No, not where I am, anyway, oh, but, right. so, you know, it's really good to go out to some nights and... Where is South Norwood? South Norwood is, uh, just north... Well, it's north... I'd say north of Croydon. North of Croydon. Yeah, about, about two stops on the two or three stops on the tram. Right. Okay. Yes, you know, and, uh, near Sellers Park, you know, where Crystal Palace plays. Ah, yes. The other reason I rang Nick, I found I was going through some papers today. Can I just ask you a question about yes, that? Certainly. How are those binoculars that for ninety nine? They're very good. Are they? Yes. I wish I'd got two. I could have sent you one. <laughs> you could. You could have uh, used uh, used them with all four of your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll tell you what I found earlier on today, Nick. I was going through some papers. I found the New Musical Express Top 20 for 1956. Uh, the New Musical Express Top 20 from 1956. And honestly, the thing about it is, Nick, that the, the, the records that are in there, is they're not all of one type. Well, I bet Buddy Holly's in there. No, he's not. I bet um, Matt Monroe is in there. No, he's not. Um, Patsy Clan? No, she's not. I don't know. Well, it's funny because Elvis, I, I suspect that this is the Elvis's Heartbreak Hotel had started to drop down the charts because that's number 20. Right. Uh, number 19, the fat man who's still going today, old Fats Domino. F Fats Domino's not still alive, is he? Yes, he is, because he was involved in this, um... Katrina. Down in, yeah, because he was, well, he was found cling, clinging to a piano or something, wasn't it? Was he the guy that got lifted off the roof? Yeah, that's right, yeah. And that was Fats Domino? That was Fats Domino, yeah. Huh. Okay. Yeah, fat man, yeah, great. Yes. Well, you don't have to be offensive. No, no, you know, he is great. <laughs> no, no, you know what I mean. Um, there's a guy called Edmund Hockridge who was very, very big with the ladies. Right, we don't know that. Number 17 was a song that was so popular, it was, everybody requested it. Um, because it, it sort of had a meaning for everybody. Go on. It's called I'll Be Home 
by Pat Boone. Have oh. you ever heard it? No. Yeah, it's the sort of song that used to be played on Two uh, A Family Favorites. People in Germany, you know, uh, they wanted it for their people. Isn't this Pat Boone? <laughs> oh, no. Speedy Gonzalez. No, it's not. You know, Speedy Gonzalez. That's not Speedy Gonzalez. He thinks on, he's on the record, Speedy Gonzalez, with Mel Blank. Oh, he, oh, Pat Boone is on the record, yeah. Speedy Gonzalez. You know, you better rush home, Speedy Gonzalez. Okay. Right, I don't know Elvis one at 14. I Want You, I Need You, I Love You by Elvis Presley. Uh, okay, and what's the song by Elvis called? That is it. Oh, I see. That is it, Nick. Thought yes, you were yes, telling me um, your undying <laughs> love. Bill, Bill Haley's got two in there. I'm a big, was a big Bill Haley fan. I can only think of one big Haley, Bill Haley track. What was that? Well, Rock Around the Clock. No, 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 no. He made, um, he, uh, the ones that are in here are Saints Rock and Roll, which was a sort of rock version of, um, when the Saints go marching in. Saints Rock and Roll, never yeah. heard of it, go on. And then he did uh, a double side hit, Rocking Through the Rye, and on the flip side was probably his best record ever, Hot Dog Buddy Buddy. Never, uh, hot, oh, yes, hot he, dog. Buddy, buddy. Yeah, yeah. You know, Is that it? No, no, no. no I'm not going to sing it. Oh, go on. No, because it's, it's... No, I, I wouldn't... Uh, actually, I spoke to Bill Haley. Um, in the 70s, he came over. He was... Because he... Uh, just before, a few years before he passed on. He, do you remember Roger Scott? Of course. Yeah. Well, Roger used to do a show on a station, and he, he said he was going to have Bill Haley in one week, and he said, if you want to talk to Bill Haley... To everybody, write in and ask, tell us what you want to ask him. And if we, you know, we choose your question, we'll phone you up. So, I'm sitting there, we're listening, and suddenly the phone went. And I got the chance to have a chat with Bill Haley about uh, the film, The Rock Around the Clock, and uh, how it came to film it. Because Bill Haley, he was uh, 60 years old when he had his first hit, wasn't he? Or at least no, I don't he... think it was a... Don't think he was... No, he, no, he definitely wasn't sick. No, but he looked like he was. He, he, yeah. He's one of those chaps who always looked like he was, well, 50 at least. Because, I mean, he, he he started in country music, hadn't he? And then he sort of, uh, he moved over. I know over. precious little about him. Yeah, because I tell you what, I've got a video of him on the Wheel Tappers and Shunters. <laughs> Give order. Oh, yeah, that was a... Yeah, well, you know what Colin Crompton said about Bill Haley? Was well, he, he sang a song, and Colin said, "I think it's disgraceful." He said, <laughs> "He might have combed his hair before he went on." <laughs> with his, because really he had the kiss curl, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, it was yeah. really quite horrible to look at. Yeah, oh, it's great. And uh, I think Bernard Manning was a bit shocked when they, you know, was singing it. And... Well, Bernard Manning was shocked. So yeah. It must have been uh, take rattle and roll, you yeah. know. <laughs> Number nine. Now here's a classic. Have you ever heard of the major Dennis Bloodnot rock and roll called Rumba? No. And the flip side was called Ying Tong. Oh, Ying Tong, Ying Tong, yeah. Ying Tong, Ying Tong, Ying Tong, Idle I Po. I see it, yeah, by the goons. By well, the goons, yeah. Yes. And the flip side of that was, I'm walking backwards no, for wasn't. Christmas. No, no, no. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. It, uh, here, it was Blood Knocks Rock and Roll Call Rumba was the A side, and the Ying Song, it was a double, double side. You know, it was a double side. They used yeah, to have, double A. Yeah, double A side. Well, I've got the Goons record, and Ying Tong Song is on one side, and yeah. I'm Walking Backwards for Christmas is on the other, so I'll hear no arguments about well, it. Well, that's what it says in, the, it says in here. Right. I mean, they're all, they're all good. I mean, that Walking Back for Christmas, which sing Walking Back to Christmas for us. I'm Walking Backwards for Christmas. Taking the tablets with me. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe I actually did that yeah. on the radio. Mountain Greenery by Mel Torme. No. Oh. The Great Pretender by the Platters. Ah, oh, well, now we're getting somewhere. Yes. yes, one of the greatest songs ever made. That yes. was a double A side. And as well. Alex is going to dial that in for us right now. Here we go from the stacks of wax we had in the back since 1956. The Platters. Oh yes, I'm uh, great. Nothing. Uh, oh, Alex, you failed me again. Oh dear. Come on, Alex, just keep, keep up. He is rubbish at this. That was a double A side as well. Oh well. Only you was on the other side. Um, Number nine was a song that um, was the first one, went to number one. I don't know, been to number one and was on its way down or going up. Why the Fools Fall in Love by Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers. Teenagers, yes. What a great uh, list this is turning out to be. <laughs> oh, memories, what memories, eh? Yes. Sweet Old Fashioned Girl by Teresa Brewer. I oh, don't know that Number one. four. Carry on. Number three, da, 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 Hand in Hand da, da, with Tony Martin. Da, da. Have we got the sound of the swinging cymbals? We should have been playing this oh, all I've got that. I've got that. I didn't realise. 
Uh, number one. And uh, number two. Oh, hang on, number three. Oh, no, that. Number two, Lay Down Your Arms by Anne Shelton. No. Lay down your arms and surrender to me. No, she was a, <laughs> she was a sort of a, a big lady who yes. used to sing uh, sort of popular songs. Right. Not popular around our way, but go on. <laughs> and number one, you know number one, it was Doris Day with what? Uh, with what? What was the song she was singing at number one? Uh, Doris Day, yeah. um, I don't know. Whatever will be, will be. Right, you see, 56 is, um, is before my time. You'd have had a field day, wouldn't you, playing them? Uh, oh, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, Here, Philip, do me one favour. What's that? Never sing on this show again. I'm sorry, I, I was only, I was, you see, I, I was only illustrating. Oh, okay. Then you, uh, then you get a pass. Oh, thank you. I'm gonna make an LP soon. Oh, great. There's something else I can't wait not to buy. Thanks okay, a lot, Nick. Philip. Okay. Cheers, mate. Ta-da. Uh, Roger Scott. Ah, oh, yes, I do remember him well. I saw him, uh, disc jockeying. He did, uh, I think the, the Ideal Home Exhibition. And there they were doing an OB. That's the showbiz, uh, for outside broadcast. And there he was. Roger Scotting. He was the coolest DJ in the whole wide world that we'd ever heard in this country, because I think he went to America and he heard how it was actually supposed to be done. Was he... We're still learning. We still haven't got there yet. Is he playing all the rock and roll? He was, uh, he was a big fan of Bruce Springsteen, but it was not necessarily the music that he was playing, it was the way in which he did it. And you can still hear people imitating Roger Scott to these days. Anybody that, sh that sh does that with their eshes, that's Roger Scott, that is. So Alan Partridge. Is that what he did? Yeah. Right, but I, I've got to watch Alan Partridge. People keep going on about it, but I never actually saw it. You'll, you'll be... Horrified? Yeah, appalled, because you'll amused. I know people like that. What, everyone in the business, you yeah, mean? Yeah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's funny if you don't work in broadcasting. If you do, it's... Yeah, well, this is one of the reasons why I was... Funny. Yeah. Now, it's, it's, not, it's not kind of like The Office, where it's, it's funny, but it's also painful at the same time. Yeah. No, I mean, he's a sad character. But, um, you kind of feel sorry for him as well. Yeah, right? it has its awkward moments. Right. Well, see, that's exactly what I just said. So it's it's actually more painful than it is funny. Because well, you, you won't be there cringing. You know, you won't be going, oh, right. no. Because I do find that when I, thinking, like, when the office comes around again, and every, every now and again I'll try and watch it again, uh, because it seems to be on constant repeat on one channel or another. Yeah. It's actually a bit difficult to watch again. Do you know really? what I mean? Even though you know it's fake. <laughs> what? Well, yeah, I know it's fake, but it's <laughs> you're actually watching somebody who is properly repellent, and um, I just I don't know. I find it a bit difficult to watch it now, in much the same way, but to a lesser degree. That Faulty Towers is sometimes a bit difficult to watch because you're watching someone having a mental breakdown. Yeah, yeah but um, Faulty Towers um, is more the the character is more exaggerated, isn't it? Like yeah. Basil Faulty is an exaggerated character, mm. whereas David Brent could be a normal manager of any office yes, in the country. Exactly. So Alan Partridge is basically that as well. He's an exaggerated character. Right. So you don't feel quite so uncomfortable watching it. And neither of which have ha uh, John Cleese in, unfortunately, which will make <laughs> Faulty Towers last forever. Mm -hmm. They'll still be uh, laughing, uh, you know, they'll be guffawing over that in their spacesuits in a thousand years' time, assuming that we uh, live that long. And the way things are going these days, well, we can't be sure about that, eh? Yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah, Roger Scott, he was, uh, he was the coolest DJ that we had ever heard. He actually w uh, played three records in a row. I can remember the days on radio when uh, people would play two in a row and they'd have to have a jingle in the middle. Uh, two in a row on the uh, 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 show just to, um, to um, confirm to their audience that they hadn't died in between. The Volkswagen Fox from Hi, honey, how are you? Let's have... Who's been waiting the longest? Let's be absolutely fair about this. Um, Farnham in Surrey. Hi, Vicky. Hey, Vicky. Hello there. Vicky. I've nearly lost the will to live there. Why is that? Oh, poor baby. <laughs> I just wanted to tell you exactly what was said about the space shuttle. Yeah. Because Clyde um, had a call on Thursday. Last night at 9.18, um, it was in the sky for six minutes. First of all, the space station went over, and then the sp <coughs> space shuttle went over and joined up with it. Right. And then... In perfect harmony. <laughs> yes. 
And then tonight it was due to go over at 9.43. Right. So I think that's probably what the lady saw. That uh, sounds about right. Doesn't it, Joe? Um, and I'm... I forgot to watch tonight, didn't I? <laughs> but does it only go around once? Surely not. Um, mm, that's a good question. I mean, why, why did they give certain times that you'd see it go over? And how would they know that? Well, look, they're very, very suspicious. There's very clever people around, isn't there, who know exactly when these things are happening. Well, there's no end of people who are smarter than, v than me, Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for the uh, thanks for the updates, mate. You're welcome. Do you know your your program is um, really hilarious when you're listening on the phone? Oh, I'll never get that opportunity. <laughs> I mean, it's quite <laughs> funny when you're listening on the radio, but it's great <laughs> on the phone. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Vicky. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Ta-da. Bye. Uh, let's have uh, Potter's Bar. Hello, Steve. Hello, Nick. Steve. You're saying about the space shuttle. Yeah. A uh, little bit of information. Uh, it travels at 18,000 miles an hour in space. Right, which I think is exactly what I said, wasn't it? Right. <laughs> it orbits the Earth every hour and a half. Every hour and a half? Yes. OK, so if it went over at 9.30... Nine um, so we've just missed it. it. We just missed it again. Yeah. So uh, we sh you should get it again before I leave this evening. Yeah. At about uh, 12.30, right? Something like that? Yeah. Almost one o'clock, something like that. Yeah. So, uh, right, okay, so 18,000... Uh, let's work this out. 18,000 miles an hour. And also the... Uh, every space hour and a half. Yeah. And the space station does that as well. So, there is... Inf uh, the Earth is 27,000 miles in diameter. diameter. Yeah. Is that true? Equator. So I believe. So I believe. And on takeoff. Uh, from zero to 18,000 miles an hour to space, it takes 11 minutes. So from zero to, to 18,000 miles, 11 minutes. That's yeah. a, a, about the... Uh, and for it to leave sp the Earth's orbit. That's about the performance characteristics of, uh, of your giant chrome boat, isn't it, Alex? <laughs> Correct. Zero to 18... Terminal velocity. 18 miles an hour in an hour and a half, yeah. Uh, huh. When when it returns to Earth, when it's in the Earth's atmosphere, it's travelling at uh, eight times the speed of uh, eight times the speed of sound. Now, does that mean that it cracks eight times? Eight times. Yeah. Is that true, or just once? Well, I think it'll be eight times. Uh, obviously, an aeroplane person would give more information than I can. Right. And where are you getting all this gem uh, from? Watching it on television. You know these NASA programs. Oh yeah, on the on the National Geographic Channel. Yeah, it's where we get all of our information. It's uh, it's like um, a teacher and a mother, and your uh, cheeky uncle in the corner of the room, isn't it? TV. That's right. What would we do without it? Be lost. We would. We'd have to pick up books and read. Ugh. Right. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for um, that. That was a pretty comprehensive uh, update, I think. Thanks, Steve. Okay, pleasure. Right, cheers, mate. Ta-da. Good night. All right, so we've learnt no end of things, Sir Chris. Are you aware of this? What have we learnt now? Have you actually taken in anything that we've learnt so far? Uh, nearly. <laughs> Thanks for the tea. Oh, lovely cup of tea. Here is, um, Woking. Hello, Joyce. Hello, Nick. Joyce. Um, I was listening to all that information. We can listen to the radio and learn things too, can't we? Uh, yeah, even this show. Even no one can show. believe it. <laughs> Um, well, I was saying that I, I recall um, a couple of those tunes that were mentioned on that list. Yeah. Um, the Doris Day one. Did you not remember that one? We, what was it called again? Um, whatever will be, will be. Oh, well, Did yeah, it? that's everyone. Hey, sirrah, everyone. Sirrah, no. sirrah, whatever mm. will be, will be. Oh, it's like Doris is in the studio with us. The future's not ours to see. What will be, will be. I remember it well. You remember it now? <laughs> and the other one, Mountain Greenery, the Mel Torme one, uh -huh. is um, in our mountain greenery where God paints the scenery just to crazy people together. Joyce, I think that you should be our forces sweetheart. <laughs> We're going to post you off to Afghanistan um, um, almost era, immediately. I must say, yes. Um, and the other thing about the stars, the saucepan one, did you say what that really is? Isn't it the plough? That's the plough, yes. yeah. And the, the but belt, doesn't it look like a saucepan? Belt. 
Uh, yeah, that's just three stars in a row, right? Yeah. Three stars in a row on the Nicky Abbott show. That's right. <laughs> right. But the but the pl I'm right. The plow looks like a saucepan, doesn't it? it? There's does, no getting yeah. around it. Yeah. So mm. what's the Perseid um, one I'm look like? Right. I don't know. I really ought to um, learn these things. I do know an astronomer. Mm. Right, but it'll never be useful. <laughs> He's a really very nice man. Mm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> for, for someone who spends all his life, you know, peering at. Well, he doesn't spend all his life doing that. He's married to a GP, and um, who is very sweet as well. And they are lay preachers in our church. Wow, well, they've got they've they've got it covered from all angles. They've got more strings to their bow, yeah. They certainly do. Yes, I mean, it makes a change for a scientist to to do that. Um, yeah. What you mean, a GP? N no, the, the the astronomer. To do what? To be a preacher. Oh, I see. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So if it, if the if the GP can't cure you, you cure you of your ills, then uh, they might enlist God's help as a backup. Well, that's true. Yeah. They both they both come and um, attend our our services when our own minister isn't there. Right. Mm. Where's he? Um. On, on holiday. Well, we only have a part time minister because we're one of those. Minor churches. We're um, one of the free churches, the Unitarians. Right. I really don't know what that means, but no, we don't. No, nobody knows what it means. <laughs> we make it up as we go along. Oh, right. Well, it like sounds like my kind of church. Hmm? It sounds like uh, just the place to be. It is. All right. Well, listen. Thanks a lot, Joyce. Okay. Cheers, my dear. Ta ta. Bye. What a nice lady. Uh, so, what have we talked about so far? The free church. Are you writing all these things down? Yeah, do you want to hear I my certainly list? Hope so. Yes, go on. Okay. I've got Gordon Brown in Dorset, yeah. Robert Mugabe, uh, Depressed in Sweden, Gangster and Ho Music Videos, Bland Graham Norton, Carol on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, uh, TV Campery, The Anthony Cotton Show, The Richard Arnold Show, Shooting Stars, Cordless Phones, The Space Shuttle, Phillips List, Disc Jockeys, and TV Comedy. Right. That's a very poor list. Oh. That's quite a lot. Well, it's quite a lot, yeah, but I would say that you've got maybe a third of what we've actually discussed. Okay. All the important issues which have fallen by the wayside now. Well, which those... Were, which have remained unrecorded. Oh, no! These are the... This is the, what I've heard on the show this oh, evening. Oh, right. I may have missed bits. Oh, I see. Okay. Here is Stepney. Hello, uh, Dave. Hello, Nick, all right? Yes, thanks. Yeah, Nick, this face shuttle, although when they set this up to orbit the Earth... Yeah. Right, at the point it starts at, it won't continually go round at that. Because, remember, the Earth all turns round on its own itself. Yeah, so plus it wobbles. It comes, well, whatever you want to call it. But, so every time it comes round to, say, a particular point that it started off with, it'd be over a different point as such. So now, when it comes round again, what is it, within the hour or something? Yeah. It'll be over, what, say, like, southern France. So, because hang on a minute, hang on a minute. The, so the, the, the shuttle, is it actually stationary? No, it flies round the Earth. But it's not flying. But you're saying that it's not flying around in exactly the same way yeah, as the set, Earth is revolving. No, it's on a set course that goes round and round and round. Yeah. And then the Earth goes round with inside it as such, at a different angle. So it looks kind of like you remember in school they used to do these diagrams of what a, the nuclei of an atom looks like, and it would have the electron spinning around it, and the nuclei would be spinning in one way, and the electron would be spinning in another way. Or am I just making this up? Well, I think you must be baking it up. Oh, right. But that's all I'm getting at, is if they set that on a course to go round, and then the Earth goes round the opposite way, yeah. it, will, it will never, ever, ever part of it. It must be a certain time. That was why I think it come round on Thursday night, I believe that was. Right. So then tonight, again, would have been the right time for it to come round again. So if we work out, what, three nights again, that would be... Tuesday night, again, it'll pass over. Tuesday? Well, I'll yeah. keep my eyes peeled. Friday, Saturday, month, Saturday, Sunday, yeah, Tuesday. Uh, or, right. or Monday. <laughs> or one of those days in the week. Well, one, no, but it, it seemed that that lady phoned up from where, Ascot area? Uh, something like that. And that was where... Epsom. Epsom. Well, that was exactly the same call Clive got on Thursday night. It was a lady from that... Someone from the southwest area. Huh. 
Well, it's probably because in the southwest area around Epsom, they've got so much money that they never need to go to work, and they just do, like flat out in the in their uh, grounds, uh, you know, looking at the stars, and there's not uh, there's not uh, any uh, streetlights around there because they're also very rich. <laughs> I'm talking are you of, talking are you envious of rich people. I'm, I'm envious of everyone. <laughs> there isn't a single person alive I'm not envious of. <laughs> <laughs> As are we all. <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> all right, thanks a lot, Dave. Hello, Nick. Cheers, mate. Ta-ta. So, are we are we actually learning things yet, or are we just getting more confused as we're going along? I remember your uh, atom and nucleus pictures. Yeah, no? you've got that. You've got a black and white cartoon image in your head of that, right? Yeah, I think they might have been colour by a, by my textbook time. Mm. No, I'm just saying insults. what's in my head. Just don't keep worry, I didn't flying. Be insulting. <laughs> it's just what's in my head. I'm saying that's all. If I had a show on ITV, I'd say, "Oh, you bitch!" <laughs> <laughs> but you, you are awful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I don't like you. <laughs> Here is Miriam in Plumpstead. Hello, my, good evening. Hello, my good evening. <laughs> uh, last night there was a very intelligent fella on Clive Ball show. Oh yeah, and he was saying. Tomorrow night at 9.18, you will be able to see Mars near the moon, also the shuttle. It's, uh, it's not every hour. It's, it was like Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Okay, so you're saying that he said that yesterday, tomorrow, so today, or do you mean tomorrow? No, Friday, tonight it was, but that was at uh, eight, 8 something and 9 and... Yeah, the fella's telling you now. And 9.18 tomorrow. 9.18 tomorrow night. Right. And you'll see Mars as well near the moon. Mars and the moon and the shuttle, all in the same quadrant. Well. Or something. The, yeah, and, and the shuttle. Right, and all you'll need is your own eyeballs. Yes. And a 99p pair of binoculars. I we haven't got the cloud. Oh, the I know. Yeah, well, they said it's going to be raining tomorrow, Miriam. Mm, so what a nightmare, eh? I not see it. Yeah. Yes, I think the summer's finishing. <laughs> OK, well, I'll keep my eyes peeled. Yes, 9.18. Rightio, thanks a lot, okay. Miriam. Cheers, my dear. Ta-da. Good night. Uh, huh, 9.18, eh? Hey, you know what it was when I came here tonight? And I said this to uh, Luby Lou. Luby Lou is uh, off, by the way, for those who are uh, missing her. Where's she gone now? I swear I'm the only person who ever shows up at this station. She's at home. What? Well, no, she'll, she'll be out drinking, I expect. Oh, not another mm. one on the... Booze! But, yeah, she said she wasn't going anywhere. Well, excuse me, what's the point of that? Well, it's because you have holiday you have to take, isn't it? Oh, right. And, and if you don't take it... You lose it. You lose it. You don't get it. Right. Exactly. There's no pay in lieu for Luby Lou. Mm hmm No. Right. Well, she's not doing anything at all. Well, no, I expect she's probably... Gallivanting. at the dog or... <laughs> doing some <laughs> late-night gardening. She even might be looking right. at the space shuttle right now. Late-night gardening. Is that a euphemism? <laughs> <laughs> no, right. no, I think that's the actual kind of mad thing she would do. Oh, right. Has she got a garden? I thought she lived in an inner city sink estate on the thirteenth floor of a crumbling <laughs> tower. <laughs> no, apparently she has. <laughs> wow. It's very it's very hard to get hold of a garden in London. She's probably on her hands and knees trying to scrub the mouse urine out of the <laughs> kitchen floor. <laughs> oh. Oh, the smell of it. Here is uh Gilbert Dyke in East Yorkshire. Hello, Tom. Hello, cool. Oh, oh wow, that's quite impressive. You've got Gilbert Dyke on your screen. Gilberdike, is that right? Yes, that is, is it right. anywhere near Ilkley, Il Ilkley, Atley, Otley, and Botley? <laughs> sort of. Um, right, the speed of sound. Yeah. I used to volunteer at Brooklyn's Museum, and I did quite a few shifts on Concord. Fantastic plane. You did what? Uh, I used to volunteer at Brooklyn's Museum. Brooklyn's. Yes. In, oh yeah. In, down south, I've I've only lived in Yorkshire for um, a year now. Oh well, the uh, you you speak like a local. Do I? Oh. <laughs> um, so I used It's to very hard for anybody uh, below Wigan to actually understand what you're saying. Uh, I'll speak more slowly for yeah. you. <laughs> um, I used to volunteer at On Concord. What do you mean by On Concord? Um, well, you know they've got a Concord there. I don't. Oh, they, Brooklyn's Museum has got a Concord, and they obviously need stewards to make sure no one... Makes things, things. yeah. 
give information. Oh, so you got to wander around the plane, did you? Oh, yes, I got the keys to Concord. It was quite impressive huh. at the well, time. Well, get you. Yes. Um, <laughs> and a lot of the kids used to ask about the speed of sound. Right, did you clip them over, around the ear and tell them to shut up and pay attention? The best way I found to explain it to them was if their parents shouted at them and you were going at the speed of sound, their parents' voice would never catch up to them. Oh, wouldn't that be your... great? Oh, yeah. That's, that, that's all they, they all said. <laughs> because you, you were travelling faster than the, their the parents' voice was. Faster than the speed of moan, yeah. So, eight times the speed of sound, you'd be going eight times faster than that. OK, well, you'll know the answer to this. If you're going eight times the speed of sound, do you, do you, do you get that loud bang eight times or just the once? Just the once. Right. Because it only happens once. You're, once. It's just you're moving faster. And why, why... I hesitate to ask this, because I don't really want to know, uh, because it's probably a very complicated answer. But what... Why does it go bang? Because there's a sound barrier. It's... Uh, yes, I agree. It is complicated, and... Does that I, mean that you don't I know? I don't understand it <laughs> quite fully. I'm very relieved. There, it's all to do with air pressure and... Oh, I, 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 bound to I, be, I've yeah. never quite understood it. It was explained to me mm -hmm. quite a few times. And so I, let me ask you this. What does the key to Concord look like? It has a... Key, uh, it's Is it a Yale? Key. It has a key fob on it that says, Concord, if found, um, reward five pounds. Pop it in a post box. Well, uh, I have to say, <laughs> what, what would you prefer, the keys to Concord or five pounds? I think I'd have the keys to Concord. How cool would that be? <laughs> exactly. Uh, does it have, a, like, an alarm beeper on it? Beep, beep, when um, it's, and, and the little lights on the wings flash twice when you shut it up? <laughs> I don't think so, no. <laughs> Isn't that a disgrace, by the way, that it's the, one of the only things that we've gone back in time? We're oh. now slower than we used to be. Isn't that oh, an right. outrage? I think Concord should still be flying. It's a fantastic bird, and she should still be up there. Yeah, too loud, but beautiful. Yeah, I mean, you stop and stared every time it went over, right? Oh, of course. I'm... Yeah. Well, you I mean you had to stop speaking when it went over because you couldn't be heard anymore. But I think it's uh, it's a real shame that that thing ain't flying uh, no more. Oh, and it's all because of the French government. Uh, really? Uh, yes. Uh, they, the French government was selling off parts of them. Um, the French government used to uh, own Air France, and they were selling off the bits of Air France that didn't make any money. Concord never made any money for them, so they sold it off. Um, and incidentally, British Airways never made a loss, or made the smallest loss, on Concord than any other parts of their fleet. So it was all the fault of those cheese-eating oh, surrender okay, monkeys, eh? British Airways can't afford the um, Airbus's, I think, believe it's Airbus, Airbus's bill, because there's a... The manufacturer of a plane charges for the part. Well, British Airways can't afford to put your bags uh, oh. to the destination that you're going to. Yeah. They yeah. can't even afford to sort them out afterwards. They're, they send lost bags to Italy because oh. it's cheaper to have Italy sort them out and then they put them on planes and fly them uh, to wherever they're supposed to be going. Seems nice and sensible, doesn't yeah. it? Here, by the way, uh, Tom, you're living in, uh, in Yorkshire. What should you not go on Ilkley Moor without? Um, a coat? <laughs> a coat is a very sensible answer, but I'm afraid it's not correct. Oh. You lose. Good day, sir. Are you to Nick Abbott? I just want to tell you all how happy I am to be back in the studio. It's Jethro Dull. Yeah, um, why, well, Nation, why are we obsessed with the irrelevances? Isn't it amazing? We can't face, I don't think we can ever face the, the fact that we're not an industrial world-beating nation anymore, you know, I'm oh, sorry, but Concord was obsolete by the time they put it down on the drawing board, in the same way as the M25 was obsolete before it was completed, because it wasn't big enough when they completed it, because things move on by the time the planners... By the time the planners got their plans in operation in situ in the real world, the actual situation has moved on. Well, I travelled the M25 the other day, and it was a delight. Well, have you ever been in it when it actually messes... Well, why did they... Look, they made it three lame superhighway running around London. When were they designed? It was sort of laid down in, in designers' uh, plans about 1970. It was completed in about, what, complete, about, I don't know, about 1990, by which time traffic demand and traffic congestion had risen above the levels of which it was demanded. That's why they had to add an, um, or plan. That's why they had to add an extra lane. That's why they're always, you know, it's always clogging up. 
Yeah, well, admittedly, it wasn't during the rush hour, and it was in August when everyone seems to be seems to have left the country. Aren't yeah. the tubes very quiet these days? Uh, it's great. London yeah. is almost completely empty. How marvellous. It is nice. I know. It, it, it takes some of the stress out of it. But you must have been on the M25 when there's been an accident six miles ahead of you. And no. Then, um, what? No. No, I have not. Oh, you've still got that delight to experience. Yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, it's fantastic. I did travel the M25. I think it was the M25. I was going to, um, uh, an airport. I was going on holiday. Going to, um, Spain, I was. Have you ever got that? Spain, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, I don't. So I've had to, uh... <laughs> la, 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 la. Um, so I was off to, um, the airport, and I was making tremendous progress. It was a beautiful day, I remember it well. I woke up, um, the uh, birds were singing, the larks were in the tree and all that rubbish, and, uh, you know, the uh, like bleating outside the window they were. <laughs> and... So I made it to, uh, into the car and I'd packed the previous night so I wasn't going to be rushing around and I thought, wow, this is going tremendously well. And the, uh, the plane was um, leaving from... Um, Hello. It was leaving from... Which major airport? S Can I help you? Gatwick? No. What's the, one, what's the one Stansted. north... Stansted. Northwest. Luton. Luton. It's going from Luton. Right. Uh, oh, that's Lorraine Chase. Yeah, Luton. Lorraine Chase. Luton. Luton that's Airport. It. Yeah. Uh, what happened to her? Did you, get, did you get thinner and taller? I'm browner. I'm browner. More common. No, I don't think she was common at all, was she? Well, she's Luton Airport. Well, that, yeah, but that was an act, didn't it? It was oh, like Steptoe and Son. He were, they, they weren't common either. They talked awfully, awfully like oh. that. And you couldn't really take them seriously. God, those uh, uh, middle and upper classes always get the best jobs, don't they? Anyway, so I was uh, I was in tremendous... Because I always arrive late. I always, like, r running with my suitcases, you, you know, like my hands on either side, and I'm belting through the airport, and I'm begging the people behind the counter who say that the plane is closed... It's supposed to be here uh, at least a half an hour before it goes. And, oh, please let me on. And running to the gate with my suitcases because they didn't have time to put them in the hole. Uh, every time I go away, it's like this. But this time, everything was going, oh, I just couldn't believe how well it was going. And I had some tunes on in the car and I, there was no rush. And then I saw the sign that says, Welcome to Essex. And I thought, Luton's not in Essex. I'm going to Stansted. You moron. And then the... The journey of uh, my life to go from Essex back to... Well, like, this is without sat-nav. I had got no idea where I was going. I just pointed the car and went, well, you. close to the speed of light. 86,000 miles an hour. I had no idea my car could quite go, fa go that fast. Can but, I just say, allegedly... But I made it. I made it. Oh. And, um... But it was a stressful way to start a break. It's like... You were driving yourself, you, you hadn't hired a cab or anything like that, or a private hire company, and they misunderstood you, you need, when you said Luton, they didn't think you said, like, uh, South End or something. No. You, you, why were you I going in the wrong direction? I couldn't you? blame it, because I thought, I don't need to, I remember I thought, I don't need to look it up on the map, because I'd recently been there. I thought, I know how to get there, it's easy. And, um, I'd just actually been to Stansted last time, and not Luton. Yeah, I am so stupid. You haven't been imbibing artificial chemicals and Of course not. All oh, right. Okay. Look, why, why do people that, the, you know, this shuttle, the space, why, why people, oh, why? Why yeah. are people obsessed with a shuttle when, it, you know, spinning around it? How many people are going to ever be on that shuttle? I don't know. I mean, why it still makes the news, I've got no idea. I you mean, know, they were hyperventilating that the shuttle was going to blast off for days, uh, days and days before it actually did. Who cares anymore? I don't... It just seems that, you know, the best thing that's come out of the space programme is Teflon, isn't it? I think it's the only thing that's come out of the space programme. Yeah, you know, eventually we'll have to part this world because the sun will eat us up. By which time you'd think we'd have uh, invented some sort of new energy thing because the one uh, revolution that we're lacking is the energy revolution. We've had the industrial revolution and the communications revolution. The energy revolution, we're still using the same engines we were 100 years ago. Wasn't it? It's um... ridiculous. Sorry, wasn't it the um, the Americans? They were trying to work out a way for ages to get pens to work in space for the astronauts, <laughs> and they would work. They had like teams and teams of scientists working on it, and they couldn't come up with anything. And then that they visited um, like. 
the Russians or something, or Russian scientists visited, and they said, how do you get your pens to work in space? And they said, we don't, we use pencils. <laughs> Well, that was worth a hundred billion pounds, wasn't exactly. it? Exactly. Can I say one thing, Nick? Quickly. I can hear the things coming. Goodbye. Thank you for talking. Oh, um, and uh, can I say one thing, Jethro? Love to. Stop whining. <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot, mate. <laughs> Cheer up. It, uh, well, it probably has actually happened, hasn't it? That's why he's so miserable. That's why we're all so miserable. Oh, no, we're thinking. But, um, it might be a, a brand new, brighter day tomorrow. Let's wish for that. It's 12 o'clock. <laughs> oh, 97. Nick Abbott. I really like you. Do you like me? OK, here, here's what I've got so far. These are the topics that we have discussed on this uh, super show so far. And yeah. by the way, if you've missed any portion of it, then you can get it on our website, in it. All the w's.lbc.co.uk. If you click on the LBC Plus button, then you'll find the instru instructions contained therein. Graham Norton, Coronation Street, Robert Mugabe, Hyperinflation, Campery, Gordon Brown, Sad Swedes, Gangster Videos, Wi-Fi, Car Alarms, Perseids Meteor Shower, Cordless Phones, The Space Station, Clyde Bull, Binoculars, Roger Scott, Rock and Roll, hey! The Earth's Diameter, The Free Church, Carol McGiffin, Concord, Speed of Sound, Ilkley Moor, Bar Tat, M25, Luton Airport, Match of the Day, Luby Lou, Midnight Gardening, and The Lottery. We haven't actually talked about The Lottery yet. For that, I'm seeing in your future. Ooh. Uh, got me to add to that list? Um... It's very important that it is complete. Uh, you got Concord Keys, haven't you? Concord, yeah. Um, Phillips List? Uh, yeah, we got Rock and Roll. Uh... La 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 la. <laughs> Anthony Cotton Show? Um, uh, I'll just put Campery. <laughs> we'll include all of them under that. All right. I can't wait for, uh, the, the, uh, the opportunity not to watch it, though. Yeah. It's going to crash and burn, because it's on opposite Richard and Judy. They're continuing, right? Or are they giving up? They're not uh, going to give up, are they? Well, do they still do that, like, half, you know, that six months I don't know. on and six months off? I don't know. Because, um... With, uh, uh, Lily... I've got to stop calling him Lily Savage. What's his name? O'Grady. Paul O'Grady, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's entrenched in that show. He does, because he does campery, but uniquely, he's funny. He's, he's actually properly funny in and of himself. Yeah. Whereas all the other camp guys on the TV just do camp as their funny thing. Sure. But he, he is funny, and then he's camp. It's like, he's got both going. So you're not going to beat him. Why even try? Why, why try to do the same thing that's on another channel? I, I really don't get that. I mean, I kind of understand when the BBC and I, and, and does it to ITV, because you have to remember they're all mates, uh, the people who work in, in Tellyland, because they all grew up, uh, the, you know, in the same companies, they all know each other, and it's all very competitive. Mm. And so if ITV puts something on and they have to book it a year, uh, you know, uh, ages ahead of time, because they have to get the advertisers and sponsors and so on in place, and the BBC, which can turn around on a sixpence, will say, oh, all right, you've got something there, have you? Okay, well, we'll screw you over by putting on the exact same <laughs> thing on uh, our channel at the same time, thereby halving your audience. Ha-ha, they'll say. That would really screw you up. And uh, you'll owe me uh, a drink, because uh, I won that one in the bar when we meet later on. It's just like a big game, you know. Ridiculous that that's, that's the way they're spending our money, but uh, it is true enough, isn't it? Uh, but I don't understand why ITV would compete, would do these, the very same thing that Channel 4 is doing at the same time of day. It doesn't make any sense to me. Well, don't, don't they think that surely in the long run they're kind of you know putting off tv audiences full stop because you it's know, just irritating if all the channels are just full of the same thing yeah then we're just not going to watch tv anyway and that's pretty much what's happening because uh, the the internet has come from nowhere really and has um decimated industries that for decades have um sort of ruled the uh, the the media firmament mm. here we are back in the firmament eyes peeled <laughs> <laughs> they should be starting around about now uh, but that's true isn't it i mean uh, you know the, the the music industry for instance warner brothers a gigantic multinational corporation just posted i think losses for the last uh, quarter 
Whereas before, I mean, you know, in the 70s, 80s, for instance, it was just a, a means of making money. They might as well have been actually printing it. They were making so much money, the uh, record companies were, as were the bands that, uh, you know, like the Eagles, for instance, the Stones, the Who, and, uh, you know, all, all of those uh, uh, lot. If you uh, were a musician, the 1970s and 80s were really the time to uh, be um, a musician. Now, much more difficult to make any money because nobody's paying for music anymore, and this is and it's the internet that's done it. I mean, before you could go to Camden Market and get, uh, you know, some dodgy bootleg of a Led Zeppelin concert, mm. but it wasn't really going to affect Led Zeppelin's bottom line, was it? Yeah. I mean, if it did, then their manager would come around and uh, dangle you out of a window by your shoes. That's true. Which he did, apparently, to Robert Stigwood. That was him, wasn't it? Oh, no, that was Rob, that was, um, Sharon Osbourne's dad. Really? Who did that, yeah. Wow. But the thing is, also, when people, you know, I always used to, like, lend CDs and stuff like, like that off my mates if I wanted to, like, yeah. you know, record a song or something right. like that. Of course. We all, we all used to make tapes, didn't we? Tapes of our favourite, mixtapes. Yeah. Just trying to, trying to, you know, edit them just right yeah that's right the we're basically acting like djs hey, hey. without the inane gabble in between <laughs> which is now what i do for a living reading hello kieran hey mick good, kieran. Uh, good show i'm a bit nervous first time caller i'll talk you through it how are you i'm fine thank you very much Great, i'm just um, just calling because we just um just got back to our car and um, I wonder if anyone else has experienced anything like this. We, but, uh, we got back to the car, and someone's obviously reversed into the car, caved the front wing in, and um, very politely left a note on the front screen for us, which said something along the lines of, um, I bet you thought this was going to be our insurance details. Uh, it's not. <laughs> and that was it. And um, I just wonder if anyone had anything similar to, um, to sort of relate to you. But um, quite annoying. Um, can understand why they did it, but it's a bit rubbing it in, isn't it? Well, that just makes you want to go out and buy a gun, doesn't it? Um, yes. Uh, maybe, maybe a knife. A, a knife. <laughs> cheaper. Yeah, uh, cheaper, but you have to get right up close. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. It's like um, it's um, it's a bit annoying because um, it's uh, you know what what can you do? You can't do much about it, and um, someone's left a note, and um, that's it, really. Well, uh, you, you know what. People are the problem. They're not the solution. They're the problem. But uh, that's what you get for living in Reading, I suppose. Well, we've got a good football team, and uh, we're yeah, you win do. Tomorrow. Now you do. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, and we're going to win tomorrow. So well, you, um, you lost Steve Sidwell, but uh, oh, he was massively overrated. You'll carry on regardless. Overrated, and uh, he's gone to that um, Tim Pot team in London. I can't can't remember their name. But no, he's gone there anyway, well, so. they they're not. Which, really uh, no, it was just a, a bit annoying because uh, the cars caved in and. Um, and, uh, you know, <laughs> someone was cheeky enough, and I can understand why they did it, someone was cheeky enough to leave that note. I can't understand why they did I can understand why they left without leaving their insurance details, because they probably didn't have any. But but to then to, to take the trouble to write a note, just to, well, just to annoy you... <laughs> to rub it in, yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. But these things happen. That's reading for you, like you said. Yeah, so, that's uh, spreading the misery, that is. <laughs> but I just wonder if anyone had anything similar that occurred to them, you know, like, um... Yeah, anything like that at all, or whether we're just the only people it's ever happened to, and... Almost certainly not, but thanks a lot, Kieran. Cheers! All right, cheers, ta-da. Yeah, you still haven't given me your insurance details since <laughs> you reversed into my car. Yeah, well, if we're going to swap insurance details, you should be paying me! Who's got <laughs> a job? I... what? Well, see, I parked perfectly. This happened, uh, the other week. And I admitted to it immediately. This also happened to me when I was working up in, um, Scotland. I, uh, I reversed in to a space and I misjudged somehow. It was a new car to me, and I wasn't uh, very used to driving. Yeah, so uh, you got a history. Particularly parking. And a guy that was uh, working on the station there, he had the, the worst, crappiest piece of rubbish car I've ever seen in my life, and I scraped all the way down the side of it. And I got out and I looked at his car, and there wasn't a mark on it. My car <laughs> needed two new, needed a wing and a door. What? It was almost a complete write-off. It was as though his car was made of concrete. Well, old cars are like that, aren't they? A bit kind of heavy duty. But it looked like... It, it looked like it was as well made as a shopping trolley. It was rubbish, his car. And I was... It, mine was my pride and joy then. Now, of course, it's falling apart and held together by spit. But, um... 
And so, I, and, and this uh, happened exactly the same the other day. I, I have so much trouble parking because the first two crashes I had were reversing out my parents' garage. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I t kept turning the wheel too quickly. <laughs> too excited. Yeah. Uh, but I parked um, with precision mm. uh, at the back of uh, just behind Alex's giant chrome boat of a car not realising that he has a giant iron girder sticking out the back of it for which uh, one would ordinarily hook up a caravan. Or another vehicle. <laughs> yeah, which, which actually <laughs> makes his car a good foot longer than you would, than any person would reasonably expect. This may be a slight exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> and so I came to a crashing halt. Of course, my car's made of plastic and his car was made in the 1970s when they knew how to build machinery. And, uh, and his car stood um, completely uh, motionless. But mine, meanwhile, was rocking about like jelly on springs. And it's never been the same since, damn it. I know, your, your car, it's like a tank. Isn't it, like, too it wide is. for, like, the lanes on the road? And... No, it, it doesn't feel big when you're driving it, though. So, well, I mean, it does, but it doesn't feel as big as it looks. And I saw your car parked next to mine, and I thought, blimey, it is massive. <laughs> Well, I know, mine's tiny. Yeah. Why does a, uh, a one person need such a gigantic car, Alex? Yeah, exactly. that's not they helping don't. the planet. No, it's the most... In, no, actually, it, 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 it runs on LPG. So What's I'm that? more environmentally friendly than both of you. So, what is LPG? Uh, uh, gas. Gas. Auto gas. What? Gas. Gas? Yeah. yeah. Have you not heard of LPG? Well, you... you there's not that many petrol stations that have LPG pumps at the station, oh, yeah, so... Oh, it's a pain in the bum to Yeah, fill you, up. you have to, like, you have to, like, fill up your car, um, and travel, it'll, you know, it'll cost you, like, 20 quid to try and find a petrol station that actually stocks this gas. <laughs> you can go anywhere you like, as long as it's to another petrol station. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty right. much. Well, what is LPG? Uh, is it the same gas that you, um, cook your spaghetti on at home? Pretty much, I think really? so, yeah. It smells like that, doesn't it? But you have to, the, the nozzle is been designed, I don't know who designed it by, you know, uh, just the, the most evil person in yeah. the world, because you have to kind of screw it on and twist like a bayonet fitting, and then the, the on the actual pump you have to lock it on to that fitting on your car, whilst every one of the petrol station is laughing at you <laughs> trying to do this. Yeah, it's like a, um, it's There's, like... And it's massive, it's like a fire engine's... Hose but is it actually gas? It. Yeah, yeah. It's not in liquid form. No. no, and you hear it go <laughs> when you when you hook it up and disconnect it. Well, how does a car that was that was built in the early 1900s run on gas? I don't know. I think it's just it's it's combustible, so it, it works basically. Uh, uh, I, no, I mean that's not the way that the car was originally made, right? No. it's uh, been changed. Yeah, well, it's, well, it runs on petrol as well, like it was designed to. You put you have a little switch, and you can go between the two. Yeah. But because you can have it converted, I think it, it's quite expensive. Yeah, I mean, it was done before I bought the car. Can it also hover? <laughs> Probably. I, I, there is a couple of switches I haven't tried yet, <laughs> so... Well, don't try them until I'm there, all right? Okay. I'll be smoking a fag at the time. On DAB. I enjoy working with people. The era of cut price, high street fashion, could be at an end, Alex. You're a fashion plate, you must be very distraught. <laughs> Oh, no. Shoppers are saturated with clothes, and women buy twice as much now as they did in 1995. Isn't that shocking? And I think the reason is because of all those, uh, ch those clothes shops that sell things for virtually nothing at all. You know, have a suit for a pound, that sort of thing. Some items will cost more as manufacturers create aspirational or different ranges, so all that cheap, uh, crappery, that's out the window. Um, according to this, um, survey... Survey says, people are bored with clothing shopping. Oh, come on, lads. Are we bored with clothing shopping? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, it, oh. I, I had to do it today, um, because, uh, I needed, uh, some new t-shirts for my holiday. Where are you going? Corfu. Corfu? What a scorcher. Yes. Oh, it's gonna be so nice. When are you going? Tuesday. Uh, how long for? One week. Right. But I'm, I'm actually quite annoyed about that. <laughs> but why? The thing is, I've heard it's like 37 degrees. Well, that's fantastic. No, that's, that's too hot. Rob, nonsense. There's no such thing as too hot. You won't be able to move. You just, yeah. just step out of the 
hotel and you just slow right down. You see, the sand is actually too hot to walk on. Well, don't go on the beach. But that's all you can do there. You could stay in your, uh, in your exquisite hotel room, you could turn the air conditioning on full blast and then slide the doors to your balcony open and then you'd have the cool blast from your hotel room uh, going past you as you uh, look at the uh, sunlight glinting off the ocean waves. You know what? I don't think our hotel even has air conditioning. <laughs> now I'm not so upset. Yes. Now I'm finding it amusing. <laughs> Thanks. 37 degrees in a hotel with no air conditioning. What, are you out of your mind? Well, it just didn't seem like the top priority at the time. How can a hotel not have air conditioning? Well, it's just not listed as one of its basic features. Does it have any features? It has a pool. Oh, well, there you go, then. Yeah. A pool. Is it finished? <laughs> 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 we'll put you up in a tent near a top-class hotel. Yeah, beautiful views of it. Yeah, you'll be able to see it with the 99p <laughs> binoculars. It will provide you free of charge. Yeah. Oh, God. People are bored with clothing shopping. They like low prices, but they also want to be inspired and they're prepared to pay. Clothes prices have been dropping for 12 years and fell by 10% from 2003 to 2007, largely due to budget fashions in supermarkets and shops such as Primark. High street chains followed with their own price cuts, which were underpinned by cheap stock from abroad. It's got to stop. The fashion industry is one of the worst uh, perpetrators of waste in the known world. They build obsolescence into their products. Hmm. What you buy uh, this year will make you look ridiculous in six months' time. They insist upon it. I can't think of any other product that's like that. But it will um, look good again in six years' time. In ten years', years time. time, yeah. yeah. Well, I, keep, I keep everything. I keep all of my clothes. And uh, everything... Uh, it, it almost comes back, but not quite. Like, I have so many jackets that have shoulders that you could land a plane on. Yeah, they're, they're not... huge. They're... They'll never come back. No, 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 no. In fact, I had a coat once. It was half price, so I had... I think it was 75% off, so I had to have it. Yeah. I'm not kidding. It looked like some sort of c cartoon drawing of a gangster from the 30s. It, they, they must have gone out <laughs> at least... A foot <laughs> past my own shoulders to the point that I mean it was heavily constructed in the coat itself. But even uh, even with scaffolding, you couldn't have made the shoulders go out straight. They sort of drooped, what was and I literally had to go through some doors sideways. What was the thinking behind that? Was it to make you look bulkier? I've got no idea. It was, it was uh, like uh, shoulders got wider and wider and wider and wider. <laughs> <laughs> and then they thought, right, well, really screw them, screw them over. They've spent all this money on wide, and then we'll narrow it down and we'll take all the shoulder pads out completely so they'll have to go out and buy a whole new uh, wardrobe. Did you ever go for a door and get stuck like a dog with a <laughs> stick in its mouth? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I do remember having to, having to go move sideways to go through some doors. <laughs> I must have looked like a total prat. <laughs> Oh. oh, but uh, did you? Were they? Was it actually shoulder pads in the coat? Yeah, yeah, they, they were massive. Absolutely, you must have a really big coat hanger for that. Was it like David Byrne's suit from uh, the? Yes, it was. Yeah. It was not too far off. That's right. Have, have you still kept this coat then? Uh, no, oh. that I let go and burnt. No, I I gave it to one of these um, secondhand clothes shops. All oh, right. I'm sure someone's enjoying it as we speak. <laughs> yeah, using it as a dust cover for a car, I would think. <laughs> Alex has probably got it at home <laughs> on his chrome boat. <laughs> yeah. No, but it, okay. It, it's the, f the fashion industry. Occasionally, they'll lecture us on about on about eco, and mm. uh, it, we've got an organic T-shirt. It's only 150 quid, you know, and all that rubbish. They really have got to stop because it's fashion is, uh, as I say, one of the worst perpetrators of waste in the known world. And it's all because people uh, want a T-shirt for a pound and a jacket for ten quid. And, uh, and it's, it's stuff that you buy that you'll throw away almost straight away because it's made to be thrown away. It's made not to last. I can't, can you think of any other product that's actually m deliberately made to be thrown away? Which is, that's just ludicrous, isn't it? Uh, bin bags. I need to say something, something stupid like that. You did ask. You did ask. Stupid boy. Paper plates. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> both of you, this is the team that I've got to work with. <laughs> Talk about the B team. This is awful. Come back, Lucy. I'm missing you already. She's probably at home. Guffawing. Uh, yeah. I bought, um, three T-shirts today, each costing three pounds each. Well, you see, I rest my face. There you go. If you bought something more expensive, it would have lasted longer. You'd have looked, um, less like you do. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you'd have been helping the environment. Yeah, but the thing is, I'm not going to chuck these T-shirts out. I'm not a waster. I'm a saver. I'm going to... I'll, I'll keep them for years. Right. But they will fall apart, though. They're made, like I said, built-in obsolescence. They're made to fall apart. They won't last. Yeah, but because they're made so very cheaply. And the people who are making them yeah. are, uh, you know, 11-year-olds in, uh, in sweatshops who are working 24 hours a day and sleeping in a cardboard box. Of course, they can't sleep because they're working 24 hours a day. And paying the mill owner uh, 15 pence an hour for the privilege of working there. And you tell that to the young folk today. Well, the T-shirt the I got, it was, it's a really good quality. So I'm sure, I'm sure it'll last. They, they can't... The thing is, if if they don't make them to last a certain amount of time, then they're just going to have all their customers coming back, you know, complaining, asking no, they for their money back. No, they won't, because why would you complain about a two-pound T-shirt? You just come back and buy another one. That's oh. exactly what you do. And then this used clothes mountain gets ever bigger. It's huge now. We can't give them clothes away. If you go to um, a charity shop and you've got clothes, it's almost like they're not remotely interested anymore because they they can't sell the, the, the stuff that they've got in the back. Mm. Yeah, those, those, um... Things at the recycling centres where you take your clothes there. I'm sure they just there's just a hole underneath <laughs> the yeah, thing. Yeah, whatever, they, it never gets empty. Yes, yeah, a giant landfill site. Yeah, yeah. And so we really got to rethink this uh, this thing about clothes because I know that you know, we all want. Uh, actually, after a, a, a while, you're not remotely interested anymore, are you? About how you look. I mean, I've shuffled about. I mean, look at me. Just look at me. <laughs> Do I look as though I care about how I look? I shuffle about like this all the time. It's a disgrace. But if you're young and beautiful and you actually got a chance of having, uh, <laughs> you know, then you want to look your best at all times. And that means that you've got to be in the latest fashions. Which, if they change every six months, means by definition, you've got to throw everything that you bought away this, uh, everything you bought this year away and buy a whole new set the next year. Which, if you think about it, is insane. See, people don't do hand me downs anymore, do they? No. They do. Well, I don't know. Children probably get hand-me-downs, don't they? Do they? Well, they probably don't, no. No, because you, you, can, you, you can even get, like, um, you know, trendy gear for, you know, little kids now. And yeah. Like, the, you know, the latest, like, jeans and, you know, whatever. The latest boot-cut jeans for, like, kids to the age of four. That is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, all these high-priced Bond Street shops which have children's ranges, I mean, that's just... That's just silly, isn't it? That's just parents who have probably named their children Charles Fufu La La Bell and, you know, ridiculous things like this, who want to spend a thousand pounds just to make their kids look cute. It's like d d dressing up dolls. The kid and now doesn't care. Of course they don't. And neither do they really understand. No. And the parents are, um, it's like that, um, we're back at that, uh, those beauty pageant things. It's dressing them up like, like they're Barbie dolls. Yeah, it's making them something that pro they're probably not going to end up being. Does that make any sense? What, like, cute and... Like they just came out of a plastic box? Yeah. Yeah, as opposed to actual children? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so please, Alex, stop spending all of your money on high fashion. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I can't keep up with you. I now. think... I <laughs> I think some women swap clothes, though. Do they? I don't think blokes ever would ever... Like, I'd never go to Chris, oh, yeah, I've got some T-shirts, you want them? <laughs> <laughs> they don't fit me anymore, or whatever. But I think women do do that. Some women, anyway, that I've known. Oh, yeah, yeah, Do yeah. actually will swap clothes with each other. Right. Or give them... Like, if they lose a dress size or whatever, they'll pass it on to another fatter friend to make them feel better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll do that with shoes and everything. Oh, now, shoes is where I would draw the line, because that's... you can't wash shoes. No. That's just plain icky. God, it's just foul. Yeah. yeah. Lucy, if you ever get tired of uh, any of your s s strappy sandals, I don't want them, all right? 
Big Abbott. Uh, no time for the old in and out love. I've just come to read the meter. My favourite joke. This is in fact the only one I can ever remember. What's an Essex girl's favourite wine? I want to go to Lakeside. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I thought it was off Drop Me Chips. <laughs> <laughs> also works. So, what we talked about so far. Yeah. Graham Norton, Coronation Street, Robert Mugabe, Hyperinflation, Campery, Gordon Brown, Sad Swedes, Gangster Videos, Wi-Fi, Car Alarms, Percy Id's Meteor Shower, Cordless Phones, The Space Station, Clyde Bull, Binoculars, Roger Scott, Rock and Roll, The Earth's Diameter, The Free Church, Carol McGiffin, Concord, The Speed of Sound, Ilkley Moor, M25, Luton Airport, Match of the Day, Luby Lou, Midnight Gardening, The Lottery, uh, Gas Powered Cars, Getting Dented, Cheap Clothes and Strappy Sandals. And the one thing that we haven't actually talked about so far is the lottery. What were those numbers again? Uh, 6, uh, 10, uh, 11, uh, 19, uh, 22, uh, 46, uh, and the bonus was 40. <coughs> Not a one. Better luck next time. Yeah, I know. I'll have to buy a ticket next time. Yes. Somebody won thirty-five million pounds the other day. How annoying is that? Oh. And it'll be somebody like, oh, it won't change me. No, and I buy myself a crate of light ale. That's it. And they'll bl they'll blow it all within yeah. six months. Mm. Like that dope uh, Carol, whatever his name was. Yeah. A boy named Carol. <laughs> well, it does make uh, it does uh, give you a little warm glow inside to know that. Um, somebody of that ilk when he got rich mm. he thought oh of all the people in all the world why him yeah but then he blew it all ha ha <laughs> 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 so it had a happy ending that story i know i i hate people who say money can't make you happy yeah it can they just don't know where to shop yeah exactly i know well it's actually true money can't make you happy if you're not a happy person if you're a um, a moaning, miserable, uh, whining person... Stop whining! ...then it won't make you happy, because nothing will make you happy, because there's always something to moan about. And usually, that's when, um, all the people with, um, minor, uh, mental illness, sort of depression, things like that, mm -hmm. all middle class, because they don't have to worry about, I can't afford to eat. Sure. I can't, um, uh, afford the shop at Sainsbury's. Or when you're in Sainsbury's, you have to think, oh, can I afford orange juice this week? No, I better get some, oh, I better not get that, that sliced ham. I better get the cheap stuff in the, in the, um... The value section. Yeah, exactly. Well, when you don't have to think about that anymore, then your f mind is free to wander around and look for other imperfections in your in your life, and it might be, or the flowers haven't arrived yet, or, um, or whatever, you know, yeah. anything at all. There's always something to um, moan about. I've always said though that if um, if I won like um, the lottery uh, um, and it was something like ten million or yeah, more, I that would I would not tell my family exact the exact amount i've won because if you tell someone the exact amount you've won then they'll have an idea of how much they're gonna get yeah, quite. in their mind mm. and whatever you give them it's not going to be as no. much as they hoped it was going to be that's probably a very good idea so yeah. you just say you just you know if you come into some money like that you just say to your family look i've come into some money and i'm going to give you this check Here's, then, an iced, here's an iced lolly. Then they never know how much of your money they've got. Yeah. What percentage yeah. you've given them. That's, that's How much the thing. you value them. Exactly. Mm. Don't tell them how much you've got. Yeah. Because that's when the arguments start. So how much will I get? Just wait for your <laughs> check. <laughs> yeah, you've already promised me half. Did I? Half? Mm. Well, if you're getting half and I'm getting half, Alex, what does that leave you with, oh, Chris? Oh, God, I didn't think <laughs> Nothing at all. You should have bought another ticket. Yeah. Hey, they just had a rave in Iran. A what? A rave in Iran. <laughs> and it was, um, ill-advised of them. Iran arrested 230 music fans at a, quote, satanic summer concert where alcohol was being consumed. Booze. And women were mixing freely with men. <gasps> In contravention of Sharia law. Uh oh. So what happened? Local reports said party goes from Britain and Sweden, as well as wealthy Tehran residents, 
had responded to an internet call for ravers to meet in uh, a town 30 miles west of the capital. I'm sorry, but how crazy on a scale of 1 to 10 would you have to be to, uh, for, to be either British or Swedish and go to a rave in Iran? <laughs> I guess it's the ultimate kind of high, isn't well, it? Well, I suppose so. Yeah, but, but how starved of entertainment would you have to be yeah. to set off to go to a rave in Iran? Did they know they were going to be arrested? Well, it, they would have to know that, that I Iran wouldn't approve. Yeah. I mean, they don't approve of, of men and women mixing freely with each other. I mean, these, they don't approve of anything. Most of them were wealthy young people, uh, Iran said, who were not aware of the satanic nature of the concert, a local prosecutor uh, uh, said, Ali Farhadi. A female singer who was performing and some rock... Did you just say, is that his name? Yeah, Ali Farhadi. <laughs> Oliver Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't noticed that. Huh. I, mm, uh, that must be a coincidence. It must be a coincidence. No, 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 no! They all looked at each other and said, Well, there's another nice mess you've gotten me into. <laughs> really? Going to uh, a rave in Iran? Well, how in the world could anyone be so stupid? That's all I've got. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's all you need. Uh, most of them were wealthy young people who were not aware of the satanic nature of the concert, local prosecutor Ali Fahadi said. A female singer who was performing and some rock and rap music bands were among those detained. The Foreign Office said yesterday it had not been asked to provide consular assistance to any Britons in the area, nor had family members in the UK been alerted to the plight of missing relatives. Not that they would have leapt into action anyway, would they? I mean, that's not what the Foreign Office does. It's sit on their arse and <laughs> fill out their expenses forms, by and large. Uh, Iran has intensified a summer crackdown on Western influences driven by Islamic hardliners in the political ascendancy. Oh, great, that's what we need. More polit more um, religious fanatics. I thought that Iran was turning around and that they were quite um, pro-Western. I guess that there's a tug of war between the, uh, you know, the people who are sane <laughs> and, the, and the other lot. Well, I guess it depends which part of Iran you know, there's probably, you know... Well, parts. you think that Tehran, I mean, I've seen pictures of Tehran that make it look quite delightful. I mean, they've got, you know, posh apartment blocks and nice parks and... Uh, in fact, there was an email thing going around, you know, one of these things that, uh, here you go, have you seen anything like this? Pass it on. Yeah. And it was of pictures of Tehran, and it was like, guess which city this is? And never in a million years would you have said Tehran, because it looked lovely, it looked like a holiday destination. Oh, really? Well, it looked that way. And when you found out where it was, you thought, oh, I'm oh. Too busy cancelling my flight. I'd actually quite like to visit Tehran. Would you? Yeah, I just... I don't know, there's something about a slightly forbidden place that slightly. Interests, interests me. <laughs> well, got, don't take your radio, mate. I've yeah. got a beard, I'm, <laughs> Yeah, right? you do have a beard, yeah, that's <laughs> right. Uh, so going there would be fine. Coming back, you might have a problem. It is. According to the uh, official account, this is shocking. Are you gripping onto something firm? Skimpy dresses were handed out as part of a scheme to film the young women and later blackmail them with provocative images. I mean, they're just making this stuff up, aren't they? So women went along and they handed out skimpy dresses. So <laughs> they didn't arrive in skimpy dresses. No. I mean, it must be 150 degrees out. So, what, the, the um... The event organisers handed out skimpy dresses. Well, this is the, uh, the, what the prosecution is coming up with. Yeah. Oh, to be young in Iran, now that summer is here, eh? Um, while the event has been described as a rave, it appears that rock and roll and rap bands were among the featured performers, which also featured radio disc jockeys. Oh, no! Oh, well, in that case, I'm fully on board with the crackdown. Yeah, big no no. Yes. Let the prosecutions begin. Hello. Nick Abbott. Come on, we're running light. So, this exhausting list is um is getting absolutely no response whatsoever. Not one single subject on this list mm -hmm. is remotely interesting to anyone who's listening to this show. Graham Norton, Coronation Street, Robert Mugabe, Hyperinflation, Campery, Gordon Brown, Sad Swedes, Gangster Videos, Wi-Fi, Car Alarms, Perseid Meteor Shower, Cordless Phones, The Space Station, Clive Bull, Binoculars, Roger Scott, Rock and Roll, The Earth's Diameter, The Free Church, Carol McGiffin, mm. 
Concord, the speed of sound, Ilkley Moor, the M25, Luton Airport, match of the day, Luby Lou, Midnight Gardening, the lottery, gas-powered cars, getting dented, cheap clothes, strappy sandals and Iranian raves. I mean, you couldn't ask for a more diverse list of topics, right? You know that bloke who had the Concord keys? No one's remotely interested. <laughs> yes. Um, do you think it's a universal key, so it'll open one, it'll open them all? I don't believe that Concord has got a key. Well, it's got, well, how did you lock it? Do they, they never lock them? Do you never lock planes? Well, I think you lock them from the inside, don't you? I think you could probably lock them from the outside. Sure you could. I think they do have some kind of... But they don't lock them up, do they? Well, the thing is that, you know, they if they just the key. close them. If they're not in use for, like, you know, a few days, you can't just yeah. leave it open. But on the... planes don't have keyholes. <laughs> well, do they? Well, maybe it's a li little, uh, like, kind of chip and pin type thing. To... Or you know, like a like a key fob, but a doo -doo, one of those. Maybe. Do you reckon? No. Oh. <laughs> but it just seems so bizarre that you just leave it open and locked. Yeah. Or lying, you know, stood or there on the runway. What if someone uh, broke in? They're not going to go and fly it away, are they? It, they're, not, they're not like someone's going to drive a car away. They're not going to wander in and go. Whoa. Well, they could load it on the back of a lorry. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, if, if you've had some lessons, you could start it up. Well, they could nick it bit by bit, like Johnny Cash did in that <laughs> song. <laughs> what a great song that was, do you remember? Oh, they used to play that on the radio, uh, endlessly. He was working in a, a factory, a, a Chrysler or Ford or one of those American factories, and he would steal a car bit by bit over the years that he was working there, and over a 25-year period, he stole enough bits of a car, you know, he just nicked them out in his pocket, to make an actual car in his home. And somebody, uh, at, the, at the very end of the song, oh, if only we had this, uh, now, we'd really have a show. He said, uh, and, and somebody asked him what, uh, what, what model it was. He said, oh, it's, uh, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, <laughs> 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, automobile. Brilliant. Yeah. Johnny Cash, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, other news from that sandy area, by the way. Very bad news. Oh. <coughs> Record heroin poppy crop hits anti-drug efforts. You know that um, Afghanistan's major uh, export, apart from death, is heroin. Is it? Yeah. How does it get out of the country? Um, I don't know. Mule. <laughs> uh, Britain's multi-million pound counter-narcotics operation in Afghanistan. I, s I swear, it's, it's Stan It's the problem, isn't it? Afghanistan, uh, Uzbekistan, all those stands. Iran. Yeah, Iranistan. <laughs> Londonistan. Uh, it was exposed as a failure yesterday. No. Britain's multi-million pound counter-narcotics operation in Afghanistan was exposed as a failure yesterday. Isn't that shocking? Not really, no. As figures showed that the poppy crop this year has reached record levels. The United Nations is expected to reveal that Afghanistan broke its poppy production record from uh, last year. Hooray! They made it! Celebrations all round. I don't understand why we're dealing with the, that problem. Last year, 69,000 hectares were devoted to poppy cultivation in Helmand province. Barely a day goes by that we don't hear something bad coming out of Helmand province. No wonder they call it Helmand. I mean, there's a clue in the title. It begins with hell. Yes. Is that w the, like, the mountainous region that they, they bombed when they first fought... Well, that's where we're stuck in now. Osama... In Luli, yeah. I wonder where he is. <laughs> if you know, give us a ring. Uh, the uh, uh, Hellman's place at the top of the drugs league for the second consecutive year will be um, embarrassing to the government because 6,000 British troops are engaged in fighting the Taliban there. I mean, if we can't make a dent with 6,000 troops in the area, I mean, what hope have we actually got of ever making uh, a difference? None whatsoever. A senior Foreign and Commonwealth Office official said yesterday that Britain had spent... Are you ready? Go on, then. £290 million pounds on its counter-narcotics operation in Afghanistan. Britain is planning to spend an additional £22 million pounds next year, so that's on top of... Mm. And the US said it would contribute £250 million. Not 22, 225. Blimey. Meanwhile, the New York Times claimed that, uh, blah, so on and so forth. So, we spend 
two hundred ninety million now, uh, plus uh, that uh, next year is five hundred million. Uh, that's almost a billion pound. Let's say it's a billion because they'll underestimate wildly to make it uh, not seem such a gigantic failure. A billion pounds of our money. Don't forget, this money doesn't grow on poppy poppies. <laughs> Uh, only for the Afghanistanis does money grow on poppies, not for us. A billion pounds, and they've just posted a record crop. Isn't that great? How is the uh, war on drugs going, by the way? Oh, fabulous. Here's Catford. Hello, Trixie. Hello. Trixie. Oh, my goodness, hello. You're, you're certainly in a good, buoyant mood tonight. Well, you've got to be, haven't you? You've got to, uh, got to look on the bright side of life. Yeah. You got your trusty helpers there. Um. Okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Luby, lose off. She's going to be back. Um. Next week? Is she going away for one week? I can't remember. Never mind. That the boys are doing admirably. Yeah. You, you, you lot get on very well. <laughs> So what, what's, uh, what, uh, what exciting things are happening then? You're going to oh. play lots of programs. The Perseid showers are coming over, Trixie. Have you seen it? You are. The Perseid uh, meteor showers. It comes over uh, once a year, and apparently this year it's going to be the best time. Uh, the, the conditions will be right. Really? Where? Where right from? they'll be. Probably from your balcony, you rotten man. Yeah, I'll be stapled to my balcony all That is totally unfair, Nick. Going groovy and <laughs> yowza. <laughs> the Perseid showers, I'll tell you exactly where to look for them. Yes. Look for them in the Perseus constellation. Do you have any idea what that is? No. But no. you're going to tell no me. No one does. I've got no idea myself. Oh. They're in the northeastern part of the sky. Right, OK. Northeastern. Yeah. Peel back your peepers and uh, have a quick gander. Right. Well, the problem is I've got, I've got all these trees in my garden. I can't see very much, but I will. I promise to go out there and have a look. Apparently they're going to be about 100 an hour, so you could barely miss wow. them. Wow! Yeah, I know. That's what That's I thought. incredible. Wow, I thought. I, I remember seeing the Halle Bebop, whatever it was, thing. Yeah. <laughs> it was that was a number one record in 1956. Yeah, that's right. But, but this blooming, blooming, what a hallowed bop thing. We were looking for something as in the papers. We knew the shape of it. In fact, it was a hit from uh, by Hansen just a couple it of years ago, wasn't it? Yes. Halle bop, yeah. That's right. But then we were looking at this this asteroid, and I said, no, it's there. It's there. And that was a tiny little thing. And you, 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 you needed a... a, a my, my microscope just to see the wretched mm. thing. No, but we're gonna, there's going to be um, like a fireworks display up there, particularly really? tomorrow, if, it, uh, if it's clear. Is that going to be safe? I mean, are we going to end up... Completely safe, Trixie. ...with yeah. triffids? Yeah, no, triffids it's... Triffids growing in the garden. I mean, my garden looks as though it's got triffids in already. I mean, you know, if I become blind and walk out there and never to be seen again, that's not good. Right, well, if you don't call next week, then we'll know the reason why. Yeah. Well, are you going to come over and look after my cat? No. There's, uh, there's no danger or pain involved in these asteroids. Unlike I thought the, you were a nice person. Then. Unlike my... Uh, unlike, uh, the other type of asteroids, which you need cream oh. for. Oh, giving me <laughs> such jib. <laughs> well, your asteroid's playing up, boys. <laughs> <laughs> About this time of the year. Oh, God. You... I don't know what you're on at this time of night, but you're tea, doing really well. Tea and sponge covered in chocolate with a smashing orangey bit in oh, the middle. Wow, well, mm. that's not fair. Mm. Can I have one? Huh? No. That's not me. That's me. You know, yesterday I heard you on... The, I, was, I was listening on the telephone. I heard you chomping away and having your cup of tea. Huh? And I thought, this is really mean. Oh, I didn't do that on the air, did I? No, no, you did this when I was waiting on the phone. I could hear it all. When they're waiting on the phone, can they hear what's in the, going on the studio? Well, I, I heard various the bits and bobs, mm -hmm. and you were all talking in the studio. The tea turned up, and I was, you know, listening to the conversation in the studio. So you were listening to what was not going out on the air? No, 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 no. I was listening to what was happening. Oh, I see, right. Yes. Because that'd be worrying, wouldn't it, be, uh, it boys? If, they, if, they, if the people on hold could actually hear what we were saying off air. Good grief. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we'll be, we'll but, be... but some, sometimes when you're waiting, you can you can actually hear what's going on. Of course, if you've um, you blocked it, you, the person listening anyway, who's about to come on next, can hear it. They know exactly what's happening. Very that happened to me when I was um, uh, negotiating my contract at another place. Oh no! Wow. Oh, we were having such. It was very very traumatic, and it was yeah. it was coming to the point where it was because uh, I had an agent at the time. 
Yeah. And it was coming to the point where we, we were saying, right, that's it, forget it, we're leaving. And um, I was on the phone to the finance director and the, um, the PD at the time. Oh and they, uh, and, uh, and I wasn't, uh, they'd basically called me to say, oh, your blooming agent, he's yeah. really given us jip. Uh, please, can we talk to you instead of him? Well, what's the point of having an agent? If it's, uh, I think it was divide <laughs> and conquer on their part, right? Good God. Um, but they, they put the phone down, because they were on speakerphone, because they were both of them talking to me. Yeah. And they put the phone down, or they put the, the receiver on the cradle, without realising that you have to do more than that to actually hang up on someone if you're on speakerphone. Yippee. And so then I was listening to them talking about what they'd just said. <laughs> <laughs> and they were going on, oh, well, you know, we, we can't lose him. Because that was when I was, you know, back in the days when I was good, not the, yes, well, I mean, you... not the dribbling fool that you hear before you today. Oi, 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 get into your head, you're still good, all right? Well... well you know, I mean, th there's a huge community out there. There's a, you know... Believe in yourself, Nick. <laughs> uh, yeah, community of, um, of, uh... I'm one of them. Oh, well, I know you Caring. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's, that's what I was going for. A care, care in the community, yeah. Care in the community. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, my dear. So what do, what do you think about McGiff, then? It's, uh, she, she, she won something. Well, I don't believe that she was on that show. I mean, she I was, was. She was apparently. This is the thing. It hasn't. It hasn't been broadcast yet. Yeah, but I was talking uh, to her today. She would have for surely remembered that, wouldn't she? Not necessarily. Maybe they're all sw sworn to secrecy. I mean, Abe. Well, it's not a secret her anymore, is it? I heard him. Huh? Yeah. Yes. So Carol McGiffin is is going to be on Celebrity. Celebrity. Um, uh, who um, wants to be a millionaire? Yes, and and apparently she won money. But, but she. she but that, that's, that rings of uh, uh, slight desperation to me. I mean, celebrity, Carol? That was unnecessarily nasty. No, uh, she, no she's, she's doing it... That's, that, that was unnecessarily nasty. Of course she's a celebrity. Yeah. I mean, just because you don't happen to, to go about on TV, and she, she's, a, she's very well respected. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Highly respected lady. Yeah, she sat down and Chris said, uh, well, you know, I mean, uh, we've seen you on the TV. Do you know anything about anything? And she said... I know a lot about lots of things. I've had that on my machine for uh, ever and a day, and I've never uh, had any reason to play it. I know a lot about lots of things. And now there's a reason! <laughs> well, what did, what did, what did Abe tell you? Uh, just that, that she was uh, supposedly on... The, well, this is all second-hand well, information I, of people who... Uh, no, 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 but I can and... tell you. But did he tell you about the Ask the Audience question? No. Time? No? What was it? Well... How do you know all this? Because it... Because it's on nickabbottsinfochat.com. You know, Nick Abbott Info. M what marvellous, run by Timo. Nick Abbott Info Chat. And they do not... They, they, it's on the forum. <laughs> Apparently, Paul Ross, yeah. um, I don't post on it. Good grief, Trixie wouldn't be doing things like that. Paul Ross. Um, <laughs> but anyway, apparently Paul Ross said that uh, she took place in Celebrity uh, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Yeah. This is what Aid told you. Uh, it's going to be out, um, it's probably going to be out in a, in a few weeks. And a person called Dean actually said, let, you know, let Nick know. Uh, Paul wouldn't say how much she won, but mentioned that she had to use Ask the Audience on, wait for it... The hundred-pound question? No. The million-pound question? No, no, no. What kind of question? Uh, what's my name? Um... What kind of question? What kind of question? Hmm. Um, I don't know what you mean. Well, it was on... A travel question. Oh, right. I think dun, we did have that information, dun. didn't we? A travel uh, question. Yes. Yeah. I think Abe probably mentioned that. Well, she travels a lot, but uh, yeah. her, her, her her recollection is um, stunted by all of the booze that she gets free whenever but, she but goes also anywhere. she doesn't go to the, the popular resorts. She goes out to the, 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 the fabulous, you know, other places. So, so... Well, she sucks up a lot of free hospitality by um, writing about it afterwards. Wouldn't yes, that be but great? It's a brilliant idea. Oh, fantastic! You know, I wish I could do that. I know, but, uh, me too. But we're not on TV, Trixie, so they'll, it'll never come our way. Well, you know, I mean, it, I mean, we could work on it. I can only dream of taking a holiday. 
Everyone around me is taking a holiday like it's going out of style. Me, I'm still working. Don't worry well, about me. If I'll I just, win a competition, I'll just sit in a corner with a bag on my head, shall I? <laughs> if I win a competition on television and a holiday, I will let you know. Right, I'm busy that week. But yeah. thanks anyway. Oh well, thanks a lot, mate. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Don't go in a huff, Trixie, but do go. All Let right. Let us know when you're going to be on next. Absolutely, will not do that. Oh, all right. Cheers, mate. Ta-da. Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, Ian is off again. Again? Where's he going now? I think he's going back to Kent again. Kent? What's so great about Kent? I don't know. I don't even know where it is, do I? <laughs> <laughs> Have we got ads to squeeze in? Nope. Uh, who's next? Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis is after the new news at one o'clock, and, uh, Oakwood. Maggie. Maggie, Maggie, Maggie. Nick, Nick, Nick. Hi, How Maggie. Are you? I'm all right. Good. Um, oh, what a, what a informative, um that was. Wasn't it? Yeah, from Revenge of the Truffids to, um, your other meaning to asteroids and, uh, Yeah, here, there and everywhere, baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just wanted to tell you that, um, Robert Mugabe, you've got his name wrong, dear. In what sense? His name is Robert Mugabe. It sounds like you just said what I said. Robert, <laughs> Mug Robert Mugabe. 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 Yeah. Oh, I see, it's a joke. Yeah, Robert Mo a, Robert oh, Moo garbage. <laughs> <laughs> These are the yokes, folks. <laughs> There's nothing like making a joke out of a crazed, murderous dictator. Yeah. Well, he is garbage, you know. Robert Moo garbage. I'll add that to the list along with Vlad I, the Insaner. I am all embarrassed. Thanks very much. All right, thanks, Maggie. Yeah, you take care. Cheers, ta-da. Bye. Yeah, we've got Vlad the Insaner, and um, who's the other one? Uh, Osama bin Looney. Yes. Is there anybody else? A mad in the head. Uh, yeah, who's that? The Iranian. Oh, Iranian uh, Mahmoud Ahmad in the head. Yeah, yeah Gordon Brown. <laughs> we are so disrespectful to almost everyone. Our uh, world leaders. Yeah. Shocking show this is. Oh well. And it it's was... all your fault, Chris. Well, it was nice to end on a laugh, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, you got to have a laugh, in not Yeah. <laughs> Literally can wait to watch Cowl on Millionaire, though. Won't that be great? I know a lot about lots of things. Yeah. In fact... Yeah. 